Thanks, Craig. P1 Chant says, uh, he asks us if we're familiar with the TV show. It's out right now. It seems like it's being promoted. It's a series called All the Light We Cannot See. I've heard yes, about it. Yes, I've heard about it. So it's a fairly heavy drama based on a novel. But it's a woman in World War II uh, in Europe, and she reads a book over the radio. He says, but the interesting thing is the call sign for the radio station is 1310. Hmm. And he, she, he says, my wife doesn't understand why I laugh at all the heavy Nazi stuff when they mention 1310. <laughs> Nine? <laughs> uh, anyways, have a good day. Okay. Signs off. That's very nice of you. Do you think the writers of that show? I don't know. I looked. Or? It's not VJ Boyd, so I don't know hmm. why they're using 1310 there. Is it based on a true story? Was she like a voice of hope or something like that? Or? Christmas tree ornament. Right. Never mind. I'll talk to Craig about it later. <laughs> uh, Christmas tree ornament. <laughs> <laughs> Jameson says, I predict that it's going to get to the point with uh, AI robots that certain celebrities will sell their name and likeness so you can have thousands of guys who are all dating Anya Taylor Joy or whatever. I think that's a great idea. If you're a celebrity woman, and you have, let's say you release, and the the Grex personality robots get really good, right? But you only release a, like a thousand official relationships. So the it's all blockchained. So there's only, <laughs> there's official relationships Blockchain that you com. can have with Anya Taylor Joy. I mean, that'd be huge. And they would be, you know, you have a full relationship with an exact replica. He's really looking forward to this, isn't he? Yeah. Bring it on. I think it is going to be a big thing, though. And you're right. The more exclusive that celebrity Mm -hmm. made it, the more they could command for each one and probably rake it in. Yeah. And they don't have to do anything. Yeah. Mm. Just selling their NIL, name, image, and likeness. Right. I was telling... The whole package... I was telling a friend of mine that I, I you know, soon we're going to start having fully artificial celebrities. I mean, we've already had a, a few on the periphery, some of the Vocaloids and and that. But uh, but I think when it, computers get so good, we can have movies full of actors that, I mean, it all looks exactly real, but none of these are actually real people. It's like you can go to that website, this is not a real person, I think it is, this is not a real person.com, and scroll through the pictures and you're going, I would swear that's not a fake picture. I would swear that's not a fake picture. But all these are just AI created faces. And so we won't have to have actual actors in movies anymore. Hmm. So I'm of the opinion that today's biological celebrity is set to have generational wealth if they are the last of the famous actual biological people because they can replicate themselves and then we can have Tom Hanks in movies for forever. Mm -hmm. And they actually have some connection to an actual human because the new celebrities, they won't have any connection to being human. I guess Max Headroom was the first one, huh? That was a real guy, though, playing that part. Oh, it was? That wasn't totally computer generated? No, no. It was a... It was a dude who'd wear prosthetics on his face and everything. I forget what the guy's real name is. Mm. And they were just glitches, video and stuff. This site you're talking about, I think there are a few, but this is this person does not exist. That's, dot com. That's what it's called. Look at that. I mean, that looks like a real Dang. person. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you would fool 100 out of 100 people. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And you can just hit, you can just keep scrolling and just yeah. one person after another that looks absolutely real, but it was created by AI. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, it's freaky. <laughs> Let's keep destabilizing reality. It's all going to work out. Yay! <laughs> um, Joel says on the robotic reanimation of dead relatives, he says, uh, you know, based on this talk that you guys were having about reanimating dead relatives, I had to think about my mother-in-law who passed away just over a year ago. My wife was very close to her mother, and I'm sure she'd love to talk to her mother again. But I can't help but think a true reanimation is not what most people would want. We would want the romanticized version of our lost loved ones, not the true one. My reasoning is that my wife and her mother would bicker, and they'd argue, and they'd not speak to each other for a few days <laughs> for various reasons. 
I feel confident my wife and robo mother in law would be at each other's throats within a week of her reanimation. <laughs> Unless she started to manage uh, her temper and hot political opinions and so on. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's uh, We want the good part of the, right. the dead relative. We don't want... It's like the people who, you know, we told the story of uh, someone who talked about losing a teenager yeah. and how much they wanted to reconnect with them. They went to spiritual mediums around the world and and paid thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to talk to their dead loved one well what if that teenager was dylan the argumentative teenager (laughs) you don't want to bring your teenager back to life just to have them argue all the time no or if you've been without them for a month or a year or 10 years are you more willing to accept the things that irritated you about them just because now you've been without them and you realize how much you miss them so i think that you would be willing to accept it for a short period of time like you would think, you know, I just want you back, you know, warts and all, warts and all. Mm-hmm. And then they get back. And then after the first year, you're like, you know what? I'm kind of done with the warts. You know, you could be a little bit more appreciative around here. Uh, it did bring you back. Did from bring the you dead. back. I mean, we kind of went the extra mile, you know, and you're <laughs> not really showing the gratitude. But, uh, you know, kind of pick up your room a little bit. Your virtual room. Quit sweating me. Stop it. You know that sense of raised blood pressure up when you say that. <laughs> Oh, man. What's sweating me? <laughs> you ever heard of the 54 Club? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. You heard of the 27 Club? Yes. That's famous people who died at the age of 27. You know, your your Yanis Joplins, your Jim Morrisons. Mm-hmm. Was Hendrix in that club? Your Amy One House. Your Jimi Hendrix, yes. He is. But... Uh, P1 Matt says, what about the 54 Club? Matthew Perry, Hmm. John Ritter, (laughs) Luther Vandross. He was 54. Wow. Michael Clark Duncan. From uh, Green Mile. Yeah. Lisa Marie Presley. Adam Rich. From Eight is Enough. Okay. Peter Sellers. Okay. Vinnie Paul. Pantera drummer, uh, Michael Landon. Wow, he was, he was only fifty-four. Mm-hmm. Nell Carter, Robert Palmer. Huh, it's a pretty long list. Tony Gwynn. Damn. Christopher Columbus. That's kind of going a little bit far back. Fifty-four <laughs> yeah. back then was like eighty-seven. Yeah. Could you do that for almost every age? Could you? Come up with your all-star list of 55. And I would... think so. I think that this is a psychological trick that we do of uh, 27. It seems so weird because you're naming lots of famous people. Well, but you think about how many famous people yeah. have died. and Especially if we're going back to Columbus. I have seen... I did read a piece that did research on the 27 Club. And they explained a way that there, there actually is a better club i think it may be like the 32 club or something like this but they say it's pretty evenly distributed but there are a couple of ages where there's a spike and an explanation of the 27 club is that your 20s finally caught up with you yes basically you're talking about people who are in high risk professions that are still in they got famous young enough to be very famous by the time they're 27 and They've had all sorts of drugs and riches, and they still have their 20s, which means your brain isn't fully making great decisions all the time. And so, yeah, there's a natural area spike there at the late 20s that you would think that, yeah, that's your 20s catching up with you. But you just got to survive that in order to get to your responsible years. And some people don't, especially when they have fame and riches shoved in front of their face, along with mounds and mounds of cocaine and drugs although i'm looking at the 26 club and the 28 club on either side of the 27 club not nearly as star-studded really yeah 26 club sharon tate but she was murdered it's not life catching up with Um, her so very terrible so very otis redding gene harlow Otis, otis redding was he shot or was that sam cook who was the one that was shot sam cook uh, was shot but i'm not sure uh that's about it dang 
William B. Travis. <laughs> he was shot. So you got to go all the way back to the Graham the Parsons. That's the 26 Club. The 28 Club, Heath Ledger. Okay, see? Heath Ledger. Uh, man. The Big Bopper. Vasco da Gama. Drazen Petrovic, <laughs> basketball player. That's about it for 28. So there's something Dang. big mm. about 27. <gasps> what about 54? 54 is a good one. But I think, to George's point, probably past the age of 50, all those years are going to be pretty star-studded. Yeah. And right. certainly your 70s and 80s, and that'll be really star-studded. What was the first death that affected you greatly? Because hmm. we mentioned one of the guys that really hit me hard, and it wasn't John Ritter, who I loved when I was a kid. Maybe John Lennon. That's a good one. That hit. A, that was the first that shattering really of reality hard, for yeah. a lot of kids. Yeah. Mine was Peter Sellers. Because we loved those Pink Panther yeah. movies. Yeah. I remember being on the playground and some kid said, "Hey, Peter Sellers died," and I said, "I don't. I don't understand. He's not. He's not incredibly old." Yeah. And yeah, he had a heart attack at fifty-four. Mm. Peter Sellers. Was he funny? Eight eight eight. Seven eight seven thirteen ten. I can't remember ever tearing up over a celebrity death until Wayman Tisdale died. That was the first one that really ripped my heart out. What club was he a member of? Forty four, I think. He was forty two or forty four yeah, when he yeah. da- died. So did he have childhood cancer or nope. anything like that? Nope. He was. Uh, let's see. And what kind of cancer did he suffer from? 44, he died. Uh, it was a tumor in his leg. Started in his leg. That's so random. I know. But yeah. See, I remember the the day after John Lennon. I remember it was very common for kids crying at school. Yeah, I, I remember groups of kids like gathered together and crying. Which is a little strange in the 80s that they were still a big deal. Yeah, I don't really? remember that. Yes. I remember talking about it with everybody at school, but I don't remember anybody crying. Yeah. I remember my friend Ricky, his brother, was a big uh, John Lennon guy, and he went and threw up as soon as he heard the news. Really? He was, yeah, he was a teenager, but he went and immediately threw up. Wow. That was a tough one. And to learn about it on Monday Night Football, too. Mm-hmm. Monday Night Football. I'm the overrated Howard Cosell. Perhaps Cosa. one of the greatest musical duos ever. <laughs> he called the Beatles a musical duo? <laughs> well, I, I think he... Yeah, you just said Lennon and McCartney, and yeah. It was wild to have yeah, Howard Cosell deliver that news. Howard Cosell was making it all about him. No. I love that criticism of people. <laughs> all right, Gordo, thank you. That's the O-Deck. But right now, it's time for Picks Against the P1 here on a Friday. How are we standing? Well, last week, something very rare happened. It's like Halley's Comet. It only comes every... 100 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. P1 Adam beat both of us. Man. He went 10 and 4. Once again, George, you and I are struggling in the high schools. We both went 2 and 3. He went 4 and 1, and that was the difference. Darn. Our two week mark now picking high school games, you and I are both 3 and 7 in the last two weeks. See, we have upsets because a lot of times we pick the favorites. Mm hmm. Teams that are supposed to win. So, I, yeah. Maybe we need to change that up. So for the week, Adam won. He went 10-4, and four, and you and I both went 8-6. and six. So for the season now, George, you are still in first place by a game. You're 81-50. Pretty good little here. I'm in second place at 80-51, and 51, and the P1s collectively are 71-60. and 60. By the way, only 14 results last week because we had a push in college football in the Aggies Ole Miss game. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, picking games with us this week is Dalton from McKinney. Who? Dalton. <laughs> Dalton. <laughs> Dalton. Hey, Dalton, how are you? Guys, good morning. How are y'all? We're doing great. Uh, what is your level of football expertise? Well, I grew up here in the Metroplex. Uh, played at a very below average high school level uh, for the McKinney Lions, and uh, now I just sit and get disappointed by the Aggies every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So you played for the Lions, huh? What, like what era? The Ron Poe era or after that? Not, not quite. We were the, uh, the there were a couple seasons in the uh, the late aughts where we did not win a game over the stretch of a couple of seasons, and oh, that no. was me smack dab in the middle of it. So oh, I never knew McKinney had winless seasons. I, I thought y'all always won. There, there were a couple sprinkled in there, George. And if you look it up, you will uh, you'll, you'll you'll see me right in there. <laughs> All right. Well, we're glad to have you this morning picking games, and uh, we'll go five high school, five college, and five pro games. And we are into the playoffs. First round of the playoffs started last night, and tonight, six A Division One. This will be Saxy and Rockwall Heath. This is seen as. Um, one of the big games that they're talking about in the morning news is being like a dead even game. I have a question about Rockwall Heath. Mm-hmm. I thought Heath was its own town. Did Rockwall annex Heath, or is this a totally different high school than Heath? Turnips. Turnips is your answer. Yeah, I guess that's, that's a placeholder. Yeah, I don't know. So you don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Like I thought there'd be Rockwall High School and Heath High School because I always thought Heath was its own town there. Yeah, that's a good point. I always thought it was like um, named after Bob Heath or something. But or the maybe Heath Candy Bar. But maybe Rockwall's Independent School District annexed it, or Rockwall annexed Heath. I don't know. Hmm. I'm sure we have P ones out there that can tell us. Banging the dash right now. Whatever the case, I'm taking Heath. Who are you taking, Dalton? I like Heath as well. Yeah, I'll go with Heath. I'm not really sure of the name and why it's called that, but I'll take him. 6A Division Two. This will be at Mesquite Memorial. North Forney and Garland. So I have another question. <laughs> Forney is big enough to have a North Forney High School? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Forney's really grown. That's amazing. It used to just be the Forney Jackrabbits. That's right. And they were tiny. <laughs> Uh, so because of that, give me North Forney. Who do you like, Dalton? I like the Owls of Garland. He's going Garland. Um, I'll go uh, I'll go North Forney to win the game. This game is in Midlothian. You know, if you win your district, you is it kind of unstable? You can host a playoff game that's mm-hmm. going on all over the state, but that's what's going on here. Midlothian is hosting Justin Northwest. Hmm. Well, I thought it was neutral, and I was going to take Justin Northwest, but hearing this information, I'll take Midlothian. Who do you like, Dalton? I like Midlothian as well. I'll go mid. 5A Division One. Uh, this is another game that is in Denton, where Denton Ryan will host Lake Belton. Who? I'll, I'll take Denton. Bolton. <laughs> I'll take Denton Nolan Ryan. What do you think, Dalton? Give me Ryan as well. I go with the Raiders of Ryan to win the game. Let's crank up the computer. Get our Chat GPT High School Pick of the Week. I'm the High School Chat GPT computer with your High School Game of the Week. I just watched a great documentary and I want to recommend it to you. It's Kim Burns' new documentary called Now or Never, a Tony Romo story. <laughs> I think you guys Not will love Kim it. Burns. It really inspired me. I now realize I can do anything I put my graphics card to. In fact, since I've been talking to you, I've already mined point zero 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 one Bitcoin. Yeah, boy. Richie Rich. In the his house. I've got all the computer hoes sniffing around my dongle now. Ha. Booyah. Word. Gang gang. I scream so good. This week's pick is the Sunnyvale Raiders versus the Crumb Bobcats. And bad, 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 bad is your high school game of the week. You all have a good weekend trying to inject enough Viagra in your stupid limp noodles to make your wife nervous. All right. Just kidding. Y'all are gay. Oh, jeez, man. Man, he brought a lot this morning. He did. This game will be in Princeton. That is Sunnyvale against Crum. Oh, it's in Princeton. Yeah. Give me Sunnyvale. Who you like, Dalton? Yeah, the neutral side changes things for me a little bit, but I'm going to go with the Bobcats of Crum. He goes Crum, I'll go Sunny. All right, Dalton, let's go to the colleges and the pros. We pick these against the spread, of course. College football, Big 12 tomorrow in Fort Worth. TCU getting 12 at home, hosting Texas, George. These teams first played all the way back in 1897, the 94th meeting, and this is the last time until maybe a bowl game someday. Mm-hmm. 
And Quinn Ewers is back, so give me Texas. Dalton? It pains me to say, but give me the Longhorns as well. Yep, I like Texas too here. Oklahoma State at Central Florida. UCF is getting two and a half at home. Yeah, Okie State's won five in a row. We've talked about Ollie Gordon, and they allow over 200 yards rushing, the Knights do, uh, per game. So give me OSU. Dalton? Give me the reigning national champion, UCF Knights. <laughs> that was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yesterday we talked to Brian Jones about this game. He thinks it might be a trap game. I kind of agree. It could be, yeah. UCF can also really run the ball. They've got a great back. They've got some talent on defense. I'm going to take UCF to upset Oklahoma State here. Not a bad pick there. Big one in the Big Ten, Michigan at Penn State, Nittany Lions getting four. There's all this talk about uh, stealing signs and cheating affect the Wolverines. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe in this game where it's going to be Loud as all get out. Give me Penn State. Dalton? I grew up in a house of Pitt Panthers. My parents, my older brother, all from Pitt. So I'm going to have to go with Michigan for this one. (laughs) Understandable. I think I like Penn State here. This will be Michigan's first test. Maybe maybe they are a bit weirded out by all of the uh, distractions. And I think Penn State can at least keep it close. I don't know that they're going to win but I think they can make it a field goal game, so I'll take the Nittany Lions and the points. Big one in the SEC, Ole Miss getting 11 at Georgia. This is uh, becoming one of the best winning streaks in modern history. They win a few more, and they'll get in the top 15 of streaks of all time. And I think it'll continue, and I think they'll cover. They just keep covering every week. Give me the dogs. Dalton? Yeah, Ole Miss is off of a... A heartbreaking win against the Aggies. Uh, way way closer than it should have been, so give me the Bulldogs. Heartbreaking win. We need somebody to beat Georgia to protect Oklahoma's record 47-game win streak. And I don't like, I get nervous when teams start getting a little close, you know, a couple seasons away. Yeah. Uh, but it's not going to happen here. I like Georgia as well. And Florida State in the S uh, in the ACC is hosting Miami. The Hurricanes are getting fourteen. Well, it seems like a lot of points. Yeah, what do you g- think? Give me the Hurricane. Okay, Big D. I like the Hurricanes, Big C. <laughs> and I am going to take Florida State. I know they've been a little wobbly lately, but I just don't trust Miami. Okay, to the National Football League we go. New Orleans, very strange team, on the road to take on Minnesota, and the Vikes are getting three at home. You're going to notice a trend from me, even though it didn't work out last night. I'm taking the chalk. Okay. Give me New Orleans. Who do you like, Dalton? I like the Saints this week. Give me the magic of Dobbs in Minnesota at home, and I'll take the three points. San Francisco is at Jacksonville. Did you know that the 49ers, since walloping the Cowboys and scoring 42 points in this three-game skid, they've scored 17 points every week? I cannot see them losing four in a row. As good as Jacksonville is, I cannot see the 49ers losing again. Give me San Francisco. Dalton? Yeah, I'm I'm with Craig. This one's tough, but I do like the 49ers. Yeah, there's no way they could lose four straight. I, I don't think so. Cleveland at Baltimore. The Brownies are getting six and a half. I I like Baltimore to win. Six and a half makes it tough, but Baltimore's the best team in football right now, and they're at home. So, again, I'll take the chalk. Give me the Ravens. You like Baltimore? Who you like, Dalton? I like the Brownies in an upset this week. He goes Brownies. I'll go Baltimore. I think they are the best team going right now, and I think they'll cover. The Motor City Kitties, the the Detroit Lions on the road in L.A. to take on the Chargers. Chargers getting three at home. Another very difficult game to pick, but I like Detroit. Again, just don't trust the Chargers. What do you think, Dalton? Yeah, as an Aggie, I've been a big, big Dan Campbell fan over the years, so I'm going to have to go with the Motor City Kitties this week. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with Detroit, although the Chargers seem to be getting maybe a little bit better. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I'll take the loins. 
And that brings us to Sunday afternoon at the Death Star. Cowboys in Giants. This is how we open the season. And it's gone so terribly wrong for the Giants since then that they're getting 17. With Tommy DeVito starting at quarterback. Oh. Maybe the worst team in football with a rookie quarterback named Tommy DeVito. If the Cowboys don't win by at least 17, then we have something big to talk about on Monday morning. Give me Dallas. What do you think, Dalton? Give me Dallas. Yeah, I'll take the pokes to cover as well. And we will see how we do. Dalton, appreciate you calling in, and uh, thanks for listening to us. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great weekend. All right, we'll see you. There goes Dalton Dalton. from McKinney. Up next, we got Gordo and Muse. A famous athlete has done it again. Next. Famous athlete has done it again. Why are you shaking your head at me, George? You know that was a great documentary. Because I know the role that you're going to play at 815 yeah, already. You don't yes, know. I do. You have no idea. Hey, man, I don't know what y'all are talking about. This was... <laughs> Here we go. I can't wait. Can't wait. I have a. I kept a can't list wait. of observations I had about it. <laughs> okay, I do too. Okay. See how they match up. I even sent you guys texts of some of my favorite know, still shots. I tried to ignore them. <laughs> Kyrie Irving has donated $50,000 to Little Miss Flint Clean Water Fund. I guess this is the, uh, you know, how do you let a whole city's water supply? I, I haven't watched know. a documentary on it. I know that was a, a big thing. They're still having trouble getting good water in Flint. Michigan. Yes. Wow. Yes. And water is something that we take for granted. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are many places in the world that you go to where you have to walk two hours every day just to go get some water yeah. that you hope won't make you sick. And a major American city has a polluted water supply like Flint, Michigan. Mm. It's unbelievable. And in that Flint River, don't they say there's just nothing but junk in that thing? Mm-hmm. Ugh. Anyway, Kyrie's done this many times. He just, all of a sudden, he just scrolls through GoFundMes, it seems like, and when one moves him, he donates. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, It is cool. Uh, He donated $50,000 to a fundraiser organized by Marie Copany. I'm probably saying her name wrong, but she's a 12-year-old from Flint, Michigan. Too bad he couldn't contribute a few more buckets the other night against the Raptors. Um, (laughs) Hello. Uh, Thank you, Norm. uh, What, Norm? (laughs) It's just back to you, pal. Dude, well, great. why'd you say, uh? <laughs> I don't know. Why is that his tag for jokes? <laughs> um. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, her goal, she's already reached her goal. Guess what the fund now sits at, price wise, or I guess totals wise? $10 million. $807,770. That's still that's awesome for a twelve year old. If you'd that's amazing putting that put that much money in my hands at twelve oh years of age, we wouldn't have clean water. Yeah, I don't think Flint, Michigan, be getting clean water. <laughs> if you'd be getting a hamburger, I'd be getting twelve hamburgers. <laughs> I'd go in and pay eight hundred seven thousand dollars for twelve hamburgers. <laughs> He's made other notable contributions. In uh, February, he donated $45,000 for children in Ghana, in Nigeria, and uh, children in Ghana, in Nigeria. Is that the name of the organization? In Ghana, in Nigeria? I don't know. No, maybe it's just awkward wording. $38,000 to families of two UNT master's students who were involved in a fatal car accident. You may remember that in March. Yeah. And then in July, he sent $40,000 to help a 93-year-old woman protect her home in South Carolina. You know what kind of deal he's got with the Mavericks right now? Mm. Three years, $126 million. You know, since coming to town, he's been pretty good. Yeah, wh- where's all the controversy? Right. He, when I hear him interviewed, he's pretty normal, and he's <coughs> been very oh, charitable. No. I have very yeah. few complaints about Kyrie since he's been here. I'm not sure I have any. Yeah. Other than that, he helped lead him to a 38 win yeah, season of, uh, last year. <laughs> sank the team. But uh, outside of that, <laughs> outside of the basketball stuff, though, and yeah. I don't really put the team sinking no, on either. him no, last year. Absolutely not. Who do you put it on? 
Well, it was roster it was a collective wide. Thing. <laughs> yeah. I put more on Luca than I put on Kyrie last year. Most definitely. <laughs> I got coffee that went down the wrong way. Uh. Kyrie was the one <clears throat> who had to tell Luca the rules of basketball. Uh oh. A couple times. Guess who's been named number one in the nation? At in what? In what? Top meteorologist in America. Ooh. Pete? Me? Pete. Delkis. Number one. All right. Where did I finish? Now, meanwhile, he was named this by the trade magazine Broadcasting and Cable. It's the name of the trade magazine. They named him the top meteorologist in America this year. Now, in a related story, Pete has named himself this for the past 19 years. <laughs> okay. Why don't you take number a shot one. at Pete? Isn't it interesting that the weatherman is now the number one guy on pretty much every local TV channel in America? Yeah, yeah. he's the star of WFAA. Yes. You said that very short. Yes. yes. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he's been there for 19 years, and he was, of course, very gracious and gave credit to the incredible team that he works for at WFAA. Ducey hates it when we talk. I know. Don't talk anymore about it. How WFAA is... Yeah. Uh, is an actual station. He doesn't even want us to. No, he doesn't recognize them as an actual TV station. <laughs> I can't believe it's been 19 years since Troy Dungan passed the torch to Pete Delkis. I know. It, it seems like fast. 10 years ago. So Troy Dungan passed away? Passed the torch. Oh. You still see Troy on commercials. Yeah. He does roofing commercials. Mm -hmm. He's up there on a He's roof. He's roofing now. So he left WFAA? To roof. For roofing commercials? To retire. Oh. I wonder how old he is now. How old Gosh, is Troy? 60? Dungan. No. No, not Pete, Troy. Troy is 86 years old. Wow. So he retired at 66, 67? Yeah. I always wonder, someone like Pete, does he have to live near the station for being called in on emergency weather? Hmm. I don't think he has to. Does but he just keep a stabbing cabin downtown? Maybe. Where he could be near? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. You're so crude. What are you he talking really about? Is. Know what I'm talking what about. Talking Where about? you can jump on air and take a stab at predicting the weather. It's not what she meant. <laughs> Always has an exit ramp. <laughs> yeah. The Dallas Zoo is celebrating its first birth of a Linnae two-toed sloth. Oh, like the one in uh, huh? Ice Age? You yeah, you talk like this, too. <laughs> Uncle Fungus? <laughs> Hilarious character. God, you're Jock! an idiot. You're <laughs> such an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I brought up something funny. <laughs> Bunky. <laughs> it's the first time that a sloth pup was born at the zoo in more than 40 years. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, this little sloth was born October 19th to first-time parents Tommy and Riley. Okay. Is Tommy a funny name for a sloth? <laughs> yes, so is Riley. <laughs> uh, they are native to South America, the Linne two-toed sloth. I don't know whether it's L-I-N-N-E. I don't know how you pronounce it. Linne? Lino. Uh They are not among the sloth species considered endangered. I wonder how many sloth species we have. There's the two-toed sloth and the three-toed sloth. Okay. So there's two. And so what's the story? They just have toads that live near them, like in a symbiotic relationship? No, that's their number of toes. There are oh, six okay. no. species of sloth. <laughs> yeah, Junior knows. Didn't think I'd oh, be... There's the sloth joining us. Searching that this Didn't morning. Cowboys taking that cover? Hold on, sloth. <laughs> Sloths feed mostly on leaves, fruit, and... Yep. And the sap of various trees. Is that accurate? Yeah, uh, yeah, and chili dogs. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Sloths do not eat chili dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the animals spend most of their lives hanging on tree branches. Yeah, you know. Hanging and, around a little bit. And, 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 hanging around Dallas just a little bit. And eating very little due to their slow metabolism. Do you have a slow metabolism, no, Sloth? not me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't? You have a fast one, huh? Crawling into Carl from Caddyshack <laughs> territory. Hold that. The fetist. Are you a Rangers fan? Do you see the, the oh, Rangers? Oh, yeah, that's great that the Rangers win it. 
What'd they win? World Series. <laughs> 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 Who's your favorite pitcher that, uh, like, his first name may be Max? Max Surger. Yes. What? What is it? <laughs> Max Surger. <laughs> So dumb. All right. <clears throat> What's the manager's last name? Boshi. <laughs> <God. laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's at the dentist with all those tools in his <laughs> yeah, mouth. He's got lots of stuff in his mouth right now. Put that one on your list for your little one to watch uh, Ice Age when she gets a little older. Okay. Oh, well, maybe at 840. It'll, it'll they, destroy. <laughs> we'll visit with... Uh, with Tommy the Sloth from the zoo. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Tell us about uh, who they root for in sports. <laughs> in what? Sports. <laughs> okay. Frank Borman has passed away. He was the commander of NASA's Apollo 8 space flight back in 1968. He became one of the first men to orbit the moon. Pretty good. Space Pretty good accomplishment. Sports. Pretty good. Poor guy. Pretty amazing. He was one of our huge pioneers, and now everybody just doesn't even care. He was 95. Made it to 95. I still care about those moon guys. Moon guys. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, also was, I guess, one of the guys to capture the famed image known as Earthrise. That picture of the moon. You can see the curvature of the moon, and then back behind it, there's the Earth that's rising mm-hmm. over the horizon. And uh, Apollo 8 carried three astronauts farther from Earth than anyone had ever traveled at the time. Orbited the lunar surface ten times. They flew near the surface, 60 miles above the surface, to photograph it, photograph it trying to look for a potential landing spot for the moonwalks that were mm-hmm. coming up. He never set foot on the moon. He flew twice in space but never set foot on the moon and said that he didn't want to. Really? Yeah, he said that uh, it was... He loved his family too much, and it was just way too big a risk. And he was like, that's all right. I don't need to do that part of it. Like, that was a post-facto explanation for why you know, I didn't even want to do it. Like blasting off in a rickety <laughs> rocket in the 60s <laughs> Ten, wasn't a big risk. thousand miles an hour, but uh, no. That moon thing, no way. Was it the Reagan Library? They had a Saturn rocket laying on its side, or was that at the Johnson Space Center? I think that was the... I think that was the Kennedy Space Center that we all three went to in Florida. Yeah. Although you went to the Johnson Space Center, we didn't, so maybe you saw it there. Yeah, I don't remember where this was, but they had a one of those, I think it was a Saturn. What's the Titan rocket? Is that a different one? Yes. Which one was the biggest one? Whatever, I don't know. Whatever it yeah, was, <laughs> it's laying on its side in an airplane hangar, and that thing was the largest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I can't imagine someone perched on top of it in a little capsule, hoping that this huge Roman candle didn't blow up back behind them. Mm-hmm. Like three football fields. What? I don't know what he said. <laughs> Sloth, what'd you say? I'm sorry. <laughs> Down your three football fields. God, we're going to have to wipe off your mic afterwards. <laughs> anyway, Frank Borman, dead at the age of 95. Uh, let me uh, move on to... Uh, New story, Vice <laughs> President Lyndon Johnson. Before the end of the century, the U.S. population will stop growing for the first time in our nation's history. Hmm. And it will start to decline. The 2023 National Population Projections Estimate. Oh, they estimate that the population will peak at almost 370 million people. In 2080, before receding to 366 million in 2100, if if we make it that long, yeah. there's, uh, there's a chance things don't go so well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be an increase of only 9.7% from 2022 to 2100. So from now until the end of the century, we'll only increase 9.7%, which is far below the rate the country has grown each decade for the nation's history. So every decade, we're growing more than 9.7%. Yet in the next 77 years, is that right? To 2100? Yes, 77. Yeah, 77 
yet. Yeah, he, he seven, loves that number. I'm seven, seven, seven. Seven. So we're just slowing down our reproducing. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, not having enough kids and and that. Biden's trying to make sure we get okay. many people coming right, in. Sloth, we don't need we don't need Hang political on. talk from you. God love you. So that would put us in trouble, but like uh, Japan and Germany is in trouble. Ooh, aligning with Axis powers oh, there, aren't we? Yeah. I like. It. I think that's an Whoa. interesting topic. Why we're slowing? Why are we having fewer kids? Because we don't need eight kids to work the farm anymore. Well, that and also birth control. I no mean, one's that... having sex anymore. Oh, oh, hold Farmers. on, sloth. Uh, you are sloth. You just had a kid. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so people are choosing few kids. Well, look at you. You waited till you were 80 to have a kid, Junior, and you I only had one. 78, not 80. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's happening. People just aren't having kids yeah. like they used to. The But that's why we should encourage immigration, because immigrants tend to have more kids than people who are already here. And when you allow immigration, you, of course, increase your population. Mm-hmm. But we could get in one of those death spirals, like what's happening over in Japan, where you have social, if you have social programs and no one to fund them, but everyone drawing off of them, it just doesn't work. Yeah. When's the time going to be back as a pitcher? Jeez. Oh, I don't, I don't, what did you say? Bring you heard him. back to sports. All right, birthdays. Birthdays today. Tim Rice is 79. From a red sack. No, that's Jim Rice. Oh, sorry. This is a li- Jim. Jim. A, a lyricist. Have you ever heard of that occupation? A lyricist? Nope. A what? <laughs> a lyricist. Actor Jack Scalia, 73. Actor comedian Sinbad is 76. Funny. Norm MacDonald told that funny story about <laughs> being on Star Search with Sinbad. And Norm Macdonald like crafted his five minutes and everything, worked on it for years, and had every word and syllable just right. And just and he said he went out with Sinbad before the show because Sinbad said, "I need to go get some socks." <laughs> so Norm and Sinbad go out to get socks, and uh, and then they get back on the stage at Star Search, and Norm does his carefully crafted five minutes, and he gets see Sinbad get up there and say, "Man, I went out and bought some socks today." And Norm's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing that? You just turned it. That, that just that? happened. <laughs> You're not going to workshop that at all. Uh, anyway, Sinbad having a birthday today. Mackenzie Phillips is 64. Mm. She's had a rough life. You know anything about her? One day at a time, slept with Mick Jagger and her father. Whoa. Or something like that. Whoa. Or her father brokered. What? Her father brokered sex between her and Mick Jagger when she was like 15. Oh, my. Mark and she had a lot of drug. King. And understandably, then she had a lot of drug issues in her teens and 20s. Anyway, I, I would just like to say happy birthday to her. That's all I'm going to say on it. Tommy Davidson is 60 from In Living Color. Tracy Morgan from 30 Rock, 55. Is that so any good? That show is really good. Give it a chance, Sloth. Right. You'll like it. Okay. Ellen Pompeo from Grey's Anatomy, 54. One of the richest women in TV history. Really? Yeah, she was like the top paid actress on TV for years because she's been on Grey's Anatomy 20 it's, years. Yeah, it's been on the air for 50 years now. She's not richer than Judge Judy. Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rapper Yu God of Wu Tang Clan is 53. Rapper Warren G is 53. And his brother is a, like a saxophonist, right? Kenny. Walton Goggins is ah, 52. Greatness. Uncle Baby Billy. <laughs> Singer guitarist Jim Atkins of Jimmy Eat World is 48. He also has a great signature telly, I believe. Rapper Eve is 45. Country singer Miranda Lambert. Well, I guess I should just say singer Miranda Lambert. Did she leave country? Sloth? No. You remember that? No, she, she's still in the country. Who's the one that left country music? Casey Musgraves. <laughs> no. Yeah, she's a little more pop no. now, I guess. No, the one who just announced that she's leaving country music because she Taylor doesn't Swift? like their... No. 
Got to go. She's 40, Miranda Lambert. Josh Peck from Drake and Josh, 37. Mackenzie Foy from Twilight, 23. Mike McCarthy turned 60 today. Happy Happy birthday. birthday. We're going to call him at 840. Kenny Rogers, 59, the pitcher. Jamie Dixon, 58. And John Rahm, 29. All right, today. That's Muse, 735 on the ticket. Coming up next, Friday morning scatter shooting. (laughs) And now it's time for Friday morning scatter shooting with your old pal, Junior Miller. Right here on Sports Radio 967 and 1310, the ticket. Scatter shooting while wondering whatever happened to Mozzie Smith. <laughs> I think he's still on the team. I think he has three tackles this season. Did you think that would be the case, knowing he'd be healthy when they drafted him? That after no, eight games, he'd have three tackles. They convinced us he was really <laughs> going to help their run defense. Mm-hmm. The great season for the Rangers continues even after it ended. Yesterday, Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon won Silver Slugger Awards. It was the third for Corey, the second for Marcus. Also, it was announced this week that three Rangers won Gold Glove Awards, the most in one season in franchise history. Catcher Jonah Heim, first baseman Nathaniel Lowe, and outfielder Adolis Garcia were all recognized for their fielding excellence, and it was the first Gold Glove for each. Pudge holds the franchise record with 10 gold gloves. Buddy Bell and Jim Sundberg each won six. The ticket's own and morning news columnist Kevin Sherrington notes this week that while football may be the state religion, Texas is officially the center of the baseball universe. Teams from the Lone Star State have captured the last two World Series, and either the Rangers or Astros have appeared in half of the last 14 fall classics. Only California comes close with the Giants and Dodgers making six well, of the last 14. I didn't think about it like that. That's that's pretty impressive. The Cowboys haven't won a Super Bowl in 27 years, but Jerry is still winning in another arena. Sportico came out this week with their updated franchise valuations for North American professional teams. And the Cowboys are still king, worth $9.2 billion. The Bengals are the least valuable NFL franchise, worth $4 billion. If you're looking to get into the world of pro sports ownership, the most affordable franchise right now is the Arizona Coyotes of the NHL, worth only $680 million. Mm. George, you'll enjoy this nugget. We had a punting record set last weekend. All right. When the Raiders' A.J. Cole punted five times and totaled 318 yards on those punts, an average of 63.6 yards per kick. Whoa. That's a new NFL record for gross average in one game. The old record was 63 yards even set by Andy Lee of the Panthers against the Broncos back in 2016. That's amazing. The Ravens' Lamar Jackson is having a great season. He leads all quarterbacks in completion percentage and rushing yards so far. The only quarterback to do that in a single season was Steve Young in 1994. He won the MVP and Super Bowl MVP that season. Mm. If you'd like to bet this week, you can wager on the race to the bottom in the NFL. The Cardinals are still the Vegas favorite to finish with the worst record despite the return of Kyler Murray this week. Carolina, the Giants, and the Bears have the next best or worst odds. Caleb Williams, still the heavy betting favorite to be the number one overall pick that goes to that lousy team, with Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Michael Penix, the next three favorites. I think I would bet on Carolina, and if that's the case, what would they do? Right, because they have Bryce Young. Yeah. Either trade Bryce Young or trade... Trade the pick for a bunch of uh, other picks. Yeah. The new Big 12 schools are not exactly setting the world on fire this football season. So far, UCF, Houston, BYU, and Cincinnati are 5 and 19 in conference play. Ouch. Three of those uh, wins coming against teams who were already in the league. So they only have three wins against Mm. the old Big 12 teams, 5 and 19 overall. Wow. We learned this week of what is certainly the most ridiculous name for a college football bowl game ever. The Cure Bowl, played in Orlando, now has two sponsors. It will officially be known as the Avocados from Mexico Cure Bowl. (laughs) What college program wouldn't want to play in the Avocados from Mexico (laughs) Cure Bowl? That name joins the list of stupid bowl names, which already includes the Cricket Celebration Bowl, the L.A. Bowl hosted by Gronk, 
The Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl, the Wasabi Fenway Bowl, Duke's Mayo Bowl, the Bad Boy Mowers Pinstripe Bowl, and the Pop Tarts Bowl. That's the one. Okay, I knew there was. That's a new one, isn't it? That one's awesome. What Pop-Tarts. kid? <laughs> what kid doesn't grow up dreaming of being the MVP of the Pop Tarts Bowl? <laughs> It's been an up-and-down start, mostly up for top overall pick Victor Wimbenyama of the Spurs. He became the first player to have 85 points, 35 rebounds, and 10 blocks in his first five career games since Shaq did it in 1992. And he had a 38-point game last week against the Suns, joining LeBron and Kevin Durant as the only teenagers in NBA history to put up at least 35 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks in one game. Mm. Speaking of LeBron, the new LeBron James Museum opens November 25th in his hometown of Akron. It's said to be a multimedia experience, including a recreation of the apartment where he and his mother Gloria lived, along with items from his childhood, high school playing career, and championship runs with the Heat, Cavs, and Lakers. The museum is at House 330, a facility started by the James Foundation to serve the community where he was raised. The basketball world lost a legend last week when the great Walter Davis passed away. A North Carolina legend, Davis, the uncle of current Tar Heels coach Hubert Davis, was all ACC and he won an Olympic gold medal with Team USA at the 76 Games in Montreal. He was drafted by the Phoenix Suns, where he was NBA Rookie of the Year in 1978 and a six-time All-Star. He teamed with Paul Westfall to form one of the most lethal backcourts in the game. Known as the Greyhound, Davis averaged 19 points per game for his career, and his jersey number six is retired by the Suns. Sweet D, Walter Davis, was 69 years old. Soccer legend Lionel Messi keeps making history. He again won what is considered by many to be the most prestigious individual award in the sport, the Ballon d'Or, or the Golden Ball, given to the best player in the world each season. It was Messi's eighth win, extending his all-time record, Cristiano Ronaldo is second on that all-time list with five wins. Pele never won this award, but that's because it was started in 1956, and back then it was awarded to only the best European soccer player. Mm. So Pele was never eligible. This week's least competent criminal is 20-year-old Jacob Payan of El Paso, Texas. Payan had been arrested on property theft charges and was booked in the El Paso County Jail. Later that day, he was released on a personal recognizance bond, which requires no money and only a promise not to commit other crimes and then to later show up to court. But as Payan was walking out of the courthouse, he jumped into a parked police car out front, lifted both legs to the front windshield, and stomped on it until it shattered. What the hell? <laughs> He was immediately arrested again, and this time is being held in jail until his court date. And finally, Susie got a job at a candy shop. She arrived on her first day wearing a nice practical dress. Her job the first day was to retrieve candy at the front register. The first customer came in, looked around, and asked for licorice, which was on the top shelf. So Susie had to climb up the ladder and get it. The second customer came in, looked around, and asked for peppermint, which was also on the top shelf, so Susie had to climb up and down the ladder again. The next many customers also wanted top shelf candy, forcing Susie to spend all day going up and down the ladder. At the end of the day, Susie went to her boss and asked, why is all the popular candy on the top shelf? He looked at her and said, I don't think it's the popular candy. I think they might have just wanted to see your undergarments. Well, said Susie, The joke's on them, because I don't even wear panties. (laughs) That's Friday Morning Scatter Shooting, the only local radio segment selected for inclusion in the National Film Registry. Thanks for hanging out with your old pal Junior Miller for another edition of Friday Morning Scatter Shooting. We'll see you next Friday, right here on Sports Radio 96.7 and 1310, The Ticket. 749 on The Ticket. Three ridiculous stop downs in programming next in the emergency break of the week. Patreon.com slash sports Greek. 
It's time for the emergency break of the week. And really the only reason we're doing this. That moment when programming is brought to a complete halt by a wheels-off comment or technical meltdown. Saturday, July 22nd, also at Dos Equis Pavilion, Nickelback. Oh, yeah. Okay, why are we playing this? That is uh, Creed. Oh, that's Creed? Did you think that was Nickelback? Oh, no. And that's why you wanted to play the Scott Stapp song. Yeah. Oh, no. DJ. I completely messed that up. (laughs) DJ, what is happening? Okay. I'll wear this one. Dude. There's no doubt. Tyler, if you can pull up a Nickelback song. Man. Somehow, I don't know which one you offended more, but you offended one of them just now. But it was in good faith. I wanted to play the Marlon Soaring song. That would make sense if Creed, Creed was, was here. Let's see who yanked the break the hardest this week on the Little Ticket. Crawford Services AC and Plumbing bring us the emergency break of the week. We're going to give you three candidates, and you get the vote on them at 888-787-1310. Candidate number one. There's a guy by the name of Donovan Lewis. Donnie Dew. They were playing a game on the invasion. What was it, Tyler? Name as many of these subjects. or Listed. You, uh, listed. You had 10 seconds to list it. And Donovan got dinosaurs. And he went to a very, very immature place. All right, uh, Donovan. Dinosaurs. Yes. Go. Oh, come on. T Rex, yeah, That's not uh, the name. I'll take the childish versions too. <laughs> I don't Come know, on, man. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know no dinosaurs. Dilophosaurus, Brontosaurus, Camiosaurus, Triceratops, Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. There you go. Give a point to Matt. He just got five right there. You got a, you have a 12 year old son, so well, you're just fresh out of the dinosaur era. I got hooked in that Jurassic Park Evolution video game. It's like Sim City, but for dinosaurs. Okay. The only one I know is uh, Lick a Lot of. Oh, <laughs> my. Yeah, hit it twice. <laughs> what a jerk. That We're sounds having... like something I would have said. Yeah, it was. Now what you're hanging around with <laughs> Matt too much. And none of you guys are going to. You didn't dump that? We heard you dump it. it. I got it. I don't know if it worked, though, in there, because my thing didn't start flashing. That's like a line four guy joke. Gosh. (laughs) I liked it. That's the first time I've ever done that. So, so very immature. I can't believe he said that on the air. I can't either. We're going to have to have a talk with him. I think that we've said that on the air before. Have we? I'm pretty sure. Don't say we. Maybe you have. I'm pretty sure. No, it wasn't even me. It was like an 840 character at one point. Again, that's not we. Oh, you you saying we approve that? When you first heard that joke, you you thought it was funny. First time you heard somebody (laughs) use that. (laughs) Said that was the first lesbian dinosaur, and everybody laughs. (laughs) So it's, it's still cheap. real to me. It is Dan. cheap. Yeah, it, it is. Me. <laughs> it's very cheap, but it does make Donnie candidate number one. Candidate number two. I wonder if there's some people who don't know what that joke is. Probably. Uh, I think ninety nine point nine percent of the people listening right now know what okay. that means. Well, I'm just saying, like a, a, a related real animal is like a platypus. Just. Letting okay. people know. Okay. All right. Fair enough. And that's fine that you were talking because you are candidate number two. I protest. No way! This is a rigged election. We <laughs> were just trying to end the show, and you went to one of your staples when it comes to attempt at humor. <laughs> there are male oh. thongs. Yeah, the banana hammocks. Oh, stop it for just a sec. Yeah. We're talking about the guy on the Philadelphia sideline who got knocked over, and it looked like he was wearing a red thong. I feel yeah. bad for that guy. I do too. Not a player. It was just some staff member. Yeah. yeah. And he got yeah. knocked over and his pants kind of rode down a little bit. And yeah. it appeared that he was wearing <laughs> red frilly underwear. It really did. All right. Here we go. There are male oh. thongs. Yeah. The banana hey, okay. hammocks. Yeah. It's yeah, like a swimming 
outfit that you see a German guy wear. And maybe he's low on underwear. Maybe it's laundry yeah. day or something. You know, you just never know. Had to wear the uh Wasn't the it cold wife's. up there last night, though? Because CD was wearing a whole face guard thing. It was like 60s, 63 well, you know, you at know, kickoff. You know, which I thought was strange that he was wearing that. He had that neck warmer and face thing. I was like, yeah. is it that cold? No. Can't be that bad. Hmm. Does it have an NFL shield on it? The thong? Yeah. yeah. Some kind Bros? of logo. I don't know. <laughs> like right on the, the whale NFL? tail? <laughs> <laughs> right on All right, the whale we'll tail. investigate that. Yeah. I don't, you know what? It, that's not a bad thought. Maybe it does. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> Great NFL product placement. Issued. <laughs> yeah, you got to wear panty gear on the sideline. On, uh, so. on the sideline. Football. <laughs> and it's just so unfortunate that he's not wearing a belt. It just catches him right there. Yeah, I at know the most it. inopportune time on national television. Is that yeah. a period thong, man? Like from the eighties or something like that. It looks like an older NFL logo. Is it? Gordon, That's not what he meant. Is it? Bye. I know I am, but what are you? <laughs> That's how we end our show. <laughs> Well, he double dipped there too. With two of his favorite topics: right, yeah. bisexuality yeah. and what? Yeah, that time of the women's month. periods. Yeah, it's weird. Huh. It's just harsh. And George cheering for that. <laughs> so there is the great Gordo as candidate number two, and then this is wild. This is from the sweet spot, and Mino falls out of his chair. <laughs> and I think he was reaching for the uh, the audio cable and somehow <laughs> fell out of his chair, and it was a really funny sound. Yeah, once the parade dispersed and we saw the swarm of humanity making their way towards the plaza, it was just too much for our technological side of things, and we were bumped off the air. And I, I really hate that I couldn't hear the fun and chaos that was happening back here, so we go to Monty. <laughs> My what? chair. Oh my god! I fell over. Are you okay? <laughs> no, I'm good. What the hell is going on? Oh, oh <laughs> I took a charge. That's a charge. I was going for the audio cable. I get up, and then the ticket ghost took my chair. <laughs> Your rolling chair. I'm good. Rolled too far back. And you landed on. Your I've got ass. the audio cable for the Fox a minute from now. Oh my god. I'm good. We called a timeout, so I don't, I don't have to miss I don't a play. Know. I don't. I, I, I don't have to miss a play after that. Wow. I think. I think my mic broke too. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do the rest of the show like this. Holy this is, this crap. is insane. That was. How awesome. do we fix this? All right. He popped up so quickly too. <laughs> Maybe they won't see it. Yeah, that's the worst part about falling when you're adult. It's not the pain. Oh, it's just you got to make sure nobody else saw. Oh, and the shot. And uh, everybody saw. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's so great. Oh. All right. That was really oh, loud. Well, Three. Was really loud. Hold on. Let's restart. Let's hear that, uh, let's hear that isolated here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what else was funny is Sean's high laugh. I don't think I've ever heard him laugh like that. Yeah, we've got that <laughs> isolated, too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. We got two new drops out of that. First, the fall. Or... <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, the Sean giggle. <laughs> what the... <laughs> All right, so is it Donnie, Gordo, or Mino? 888 787 1310. Hello. You're on the ticket. Who wins? Congrats, Hall of Famers. It's Thank E-Break you. Man here with my piano debut. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody wants a Nicolata. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, you're on the ticket. Who wins? Hello? Oh, hi, musers. Hey, hmm. triple fake tiger. Okay, all right. Serenity hey, now. I haven't talked to you guys since the Rangers won the World Series. Congratulations. Well, we don't play for the Rangers, but yeah, I, I guess yeah. congratulations yeah. to them. You know, that's kind of like winning a major. And I've won 15, mm-hmm. so they're at about 22 behind me. I don't, <laughs> don't know about the math. <laughs> okay, I'm going to vote for Donnie. Okay, thank you. Hello, you are on the ticket. Who wins? Yes, I'd like to vote for Donovan's low blow and Hooter Brown. Okay, thank you. Hello, you're on ticket radio. Guten Tag. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Hey, 
You're on the ticket, AM, FM, and stream. Shout out to my brothers-in-law, Corey and Joel, and I'd like to vote for Donnie, please. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. That's how you vote right there. Hi, you're on the ticket. Who wins? Good morning, users. I would like to uh, wish a happy birthday to good, strong P1, Corey McNulty, and vote for the most undervalued user, Gordon Keith. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> These guys don't value me. What are you talking about? <laughs> you don't value me enough. <laughs> Hi, you're on the ticket. Who wins? Obviously, you've got to age go home and die. <laughs> what? <the>? Obviously. What? <laughs> You've got what? Is this supposed to be Dave Campo or I don't know doing the AIDS. doing the Haley Joe Osment line? Hmm. I don't know. Hi, you're no, on. No, no, that was the George W. Bush line, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have age, go home and die. <laughs> Out of context. Hi, right, you're on the ticket. Who wins? Good morning, AKOFs. Hey, hey. I would like to vote for the great Donovan. Whoa! And ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a winner, Donovan Lewis. All right, uh, Donovan, dinosaurs. Yes, go. Oh, come on. T Rex. Yeah. That's not uh, the name. I'll take the childish versions too. <laughs> I don't come know, on. Man. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm not, no, no dinosaurs. Dilophosaurus, <laughs> Brontosaurus, Camiosaurus. Triceratops, Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. There you go. Give a point to Matt. He just got five right there. You got a. You have a twelve-year-old son, so well, you're just fresh out of the dinosaur era. I got hooked on that Jurassic Park Evolution video game. It's like Sim City, but for dinosaurs. Okay. The only one I know is uh, lick a lot of. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, hit it twice. <laughs> what a jerk! That We're sounds having... like something I would have said. Yeah, it was. Now what you're hanging around with <laughs> Matt too much. And now that you guys are going to... You didn't dump that? We heard I you dump it. it. I got it. I don't know if it worked, though, Three in there, because my thing it. didn't start flashing. That's like a line four guy joke. Gosh. <laughs> I liked it. That's the first What's time the I've score? ever done that. <laughs> I mean, he's that, that's the only dinosaur he can name. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> How bad is that? How many is that for Donnie? That is his eighth win. He's 127 behind Norman Golan Sapel Hitzkus. <laughs> Boy, right, Fernando's go, obsessed with Golan uh, Sapel. Uh, oh, and he's back in the news, too. Is he really? He is? Well, McGreevy is, the oh, governor okay. who... Oh, okay. uh, Took yeah. the fall for him. He's going to run for mayor in New Jersey. Oh, wow. Okay. And Golan Zappel was his lover, right? His consort. Love yes, off. his gay okay. consort. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't have to add that no. word. Well, he was. Sorry. All right. Joining us now on the ticket hotline is the birthday boy. Happy birthday to Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy. Good morning. Uh, how we're doing, boys? Uh, we're doing Good. all right. Happy, Happy birthday. 60th. Hey, let me do a uh, let me do a mic check. Uh, football, 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 football. Yeah, we got you. Yep. We, go. yeah, we yeah. got you. Did you guys hear me say football ball last week? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. It was funny, though. Football ball. <laughs> yeah, it's football fun to ball. say. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. How we doing? We're doing all right, Coach. How are you? Uh, you know, doing okay. You know, just sitting there watching a uh, little tape and uh, getting ready for another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, trying to get over the Eagles' loss? No, I'm just getting ready for another birthday party put on by the Jones kids. Another oh, one? Oh, okay, another one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think, uh, let me look at the invite here. Uh, yeah, this one's uh, Ice Age themed, and I think we're going to go to Chuck E. Cheese. So, well. Okay. <laughs> we, we were talking about the Ice Age movies, uh, about the sloth. That, that sloth's funny, man. It, it is good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting ready for another one, huh? Yeah, just getting ready for that, and uh, you know, got, a couple, got a couple presents around here people sent me. Oh, uh, who sent you what? Uh, here's one, uh, I've already watched it, he, Tony Romo sent me a DVD of uh, his uh, documentary. <laughs> oh yeah, we just okay. talked about yeah. that, we gave yeah, it a good guys, review, uh, now and then, now and or never, that's now what it's or called. Now or never, yeah, uh, 
I wish I would have said never. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Seventy-one minutes. I'm not going to get back. You know, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was good. You know, it, uh, you know it, it was fun. You know, watching that, watching him play football. You know. Uh-huh. And, uh Did they have an open bar at his wedding? Did, Why is that? <laughs> Did Roger really say that Romo was a better quarterback than he was? <laughs> What's that all about? I don't know, Roger. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. You know, that's like, I don't know, it's like saying, uh, you know, Razor was a better goalie than Wayne Gretzky or something, you know? <laughs> He may have been a better goalie, actually, than Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, I think he was a better goalie. I think we could say that. Okay, how about this one? How about that, uh, you know, Popeye Jones was a better Maverick than Dirk, you know? Same kind of thing. Yeah, that'd be a stretch. (laughs) But no, it was was cool. It was nice of Tony to do that. But, uh, you know, let's get back to football. Yeah, let's get back to football. Yeah, Yeah, we've got got a game this week. and uh, You know, I got to tell you guys, I'm tired. Tired? What's what's making you so tired? Just the preparations for the games? Yeah, you know, I'm coaching and calling plays. You know, that's tough. Yeah, you that uh, that thing that you have there, that big play sheet that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, I got all those plays. You know, I'm trying to call. Does it look like I know what I'm doing? <laughs> yeah, it well, yeah, looks, it, like, it looks it. like it. Okay, I'm glad it looks like it. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just a lot to keep up with. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I got a lot of. Got a lot of plays on there, you know, like I got my top ten. and uh, Your top ten plays? No, top ten spots for Uber Eats, you know. Uh, get that going. <laughs> Why is that on your play sheet? <laughs> Rank them and then laminate them? <laughs> yeah, but it's hard, you know. It's really hard keeping up with all the plays, and you got to uh, keep up with time, time, timeouts and all that, game management, uh yeah, screw it, you know. That's why you just need to hire a bunch of assistants, you know, to handle all that for you, and you just kind of patrol the sidelines looking intense. No, no, that's what I'm trying to do. Am I selling that very well, by the way? Does it look like I'm in charge down there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, it's okay this week, though. I don't even need a play sheet this week. Why is that? No, the Giants suck. You not watch football this year? Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're just going to wing it? Yeah, I'm just going to wing it, you know? <laughs> you should win big. Uh, you should, but uh, yeah, I just don't have too much time for football. got birthday party today, birthday party mm-hmm. tonight, and uh, then we're going to watch a movie tomorrow. You know, it's going to be a big birthday weekend. That's what I'm going to make out of it. What you are you going to watch? you going to watch that Barbie movie? I know you're big into collecting vintage Barbies. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to watch that again. I've already seen it three times. You like like that, huh? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I watch Barbie movie and uh, you know, just kinda hang out a little bit, maybe go to a few good bars. You guys got some good spots I could go to? <laughs> no? no. I heard the open bar at Tony's wedding's pretty good though. <laughs> that's what I want. You know, I want that Rumble yeah. open bar thing at the wedding. But, maybe uh, wait till after the season to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, when you coach the Cowboys, that's all you think about is drinking. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or if you own the Cowboys, obviously that's all you do is drink. <laughs> Has somebody given you your birthday spankings yet today, Coach? No, I'd like to get some, though. You got a candidate? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we need to get Dalrymple back up there. Okay. Okay, okay Coach. All right. That is it, Coach. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Coach. There he goes. All right. Mike McCarthy, head coach of the Cowboys. Happy birthday. Turns 60 today. Thank you, Miller Man. This is the segment we dedicate to the P1 every week. He gets a chance to call in and uh, talk about whatever's moved you this week. If you want to talk about stuff and other things, you can do that. Is that generic enough for you? Yep. One Generic. dude already, uh, by the way, 888-787-1310 is our telephone number. We also have our, you can reach us by email, which I believe is on the ticket website. And we're all on Twitter or X. I'm Gordon Keith. He's George Dunham. And June's is June's underscore overscore M period dot junior. No, at junior underscore Miller. It's confusing. There was already a Junior Miller when I signed up for Twitter in 2009. Craig Why didn't Miller. you check Craig Miller? I did. Oh, that was already taken, That's also too. a common name. Oh, it is? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I have the most common name of the three of us. You got to trick up your spelling of it. Like M-Y-L-L-L-Y-R. <laughs> K-R-E-G uh, for Craig. Yeah. Miller with three L's. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Three L's. 
Three L's. Okay. Three and L's. Y's. Oh, yeah. And, and it's two Y's. <laughs> I'm sorry. Two Y's in Miller? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You When you do your douchey middle age remake of yourself and you go all Chris Gaines, <laughs> change the spelling of your last name to M Y L L L Y R. I better hurry because I'm blowing through middle, middle age um, right now. Indeed. Yeah, we kind of are. Indeed. A little late yeah, for a I think, remake. I think people oh, no. forget middle age is starting around 35. You know, yeah, I mean, what is really, it? 35 to 40? 45? What is it technically? I think middle age is 35 to 55. That's kind of what I think. Or maybe I've always thought it was 40 to 60. I think it's 40 to 60. It's whatever yes, I am. But, oh, no. Oh, Tyler. Oh, Tyler. <laughs> sweet, sweet Tyler. You're still in your 30s. Yeah. I don't think of that as middle you, age. You're I guess in your early is, 30s, right? 33? 32 counts. Oh, We're extending no. it to 32 now. Oh, no. <laughs> According to Webster's, it's from 45 to 64 yeah, is middle good, age. Tyler. That's middle close. age? Yeah. All right. That's confusing. So 45, when you hit middle age at 45, you're expected to live to 90. Yeah, that yeah, math no doesn't way. work, does yeah, it? Yeah, it doesn't. I think middle age should be considered 35 to 50. That sure seems young. I know Tyler feels like he's there, but... And then once you're 50, you are a senior citizen. <laughs> no. No longer fit for the world. God. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one dude already in trouble. Do you remember the name Brian West? We talked about him in a news story recently. Brian West. What do you do? He was the guy that was hired by Gannett newspapers to be their Taylor oh, yeah, Swift the Taylor reporter. Swift guy. And he's taken it from both sides, both sides of the desk, because journalists think it's stupid to have a dedicated Taylor Swift guy. Why? I don't know. They're because the old school is like, this is ridiculous. It's entertainment. Like we need more... Like George said, the cowboy, uh, the morning news has a dedicated Cowboys guy, mm-hmm. and David Moore. She's a, she's got, like a franchise. They've yes, got a couple of them. I'm I'm with you, but they're all. He's also hearing it from Swifties. Well, I'm getting Swifted at home right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? Kelsey podcast and when do my Chiefs play and. It's Taylor's music, which I generally like, but some of the stuff from the last five years is, I don't know if I want to hear it that much. Hmm. Sounds like you hate women like, who accomplish things. I feel a lot like Vlad these I'm gonna, days. I want to reframe it to where I can win an argument with you. Um, I don't argue. All right. So he describes himself as a fan of Taylor Swift. So some journalists thought that, oh, that's wrong. You can't be fan and report on her oh, objectively. Gosh. Okay. I agree with that. I agree really? with that. Yes. You guys are Cowboy fans. You talk about the Cowboys. Uh, I was when I was a kid, but once I got into this business, I tried to be more down the middle. I really don't You care know that anymore. about me. I've always tried to be down the middle about even my favorite Th- team. This is the yeah. only show that isn't infected with weeism. Uh oh. <laughs> Fernando. Has well, a don't don't opinion. try to paint us with that brush, Gordo. About other shows. Don't try to paint us with that brush. What? I, I've I've always made it. Uh, this is more. a serious topic, but in 30 <laughs> years, I've always tried to be down the middle, and not say we or not be a fan because that's we were kind of raised in old school journalism mm-hmm. that you're not supposed to do that. So I do understand this criticism. Yeah, we try to be yeah, objective. But the world has changed, though, in that it's not that big a deal to, uh, you know, to do all the like when we first started here. The ticket it was a huge thing to call a broadcaster a homer. I mean, that was the huge, biggest insult you could issue. Now people don't really care. They want to hear right. the broadcasters that are hired by the Cowboys to be lean a little bit more towards Cowboys than the opposing team. But like David Moore will not say he's a fan of the Cowboys. He is a reporter on the Cowboys, and you're supposed to come from that perspective. You're supposed to be down the middle. Right. I can understand why David, but he's employed by the Cowboys, so he could he's use not. we, right? <laughs> no, he's no, not employed, he's not by, not the employed by the Cowboys. <laughs> but so to the point here, this Brian West guy, he's employed by Gannett. He should not be a Taylor Swift fan if he's reporting on her. See, I have no problem with that because it's he's a fan of hers, so he's going to know a lot about her. 
I still think you can be a fan of something and report objectively. I think it's a lot harder. I think you can, but I think it's a lot harder. It's I mean, a lot I, harder. I'm a sports reporter. I root for the Cowboys. You are barely a sports reporter. Okay, don't. Why are you attacking me? <laughs> You're a hack. Whoa, jeez. <laughs> I'm just saying that I think that and the world does not agree with this, right? But I think that you can be a fan of something and still be really objective about that thing. And you say, yes, when your team possible. does something yeah. wrong, this is what bugs yeah. me the heck about politics and I get killed for it. But when I criticize my team in politics, my team kills me. <laughs> The yeah. violence, and they love doing the trick of insisting you actually root for the other team if you criticize our team. And I just, okay, fine. Like I said, you can be a fan of something and still be objective. It's just hard. I don't think it's that hard. Oh, it I, it's is. So, it's very why? hard for a lot be- of people. Because it's we when the team wins, and it's they when the team loses. Mm-hmm. Right. I think yeah. that you can be a fan and say, like you and the Spurs. Yes, like if they do not, if they do something wrong, or you think that someone's not playing with their potential, do you do nothing but make excuses for them and say no, that's not true? And you're constantly no, but I've had to work very hard at it. It's something I've made a point to do and work hard at to be to to praise my favorite teams, but also be critical to come at them from the angle of a reporter. You did the work, but I would like I, I would also say that I don't think it I don't think people care anymore. I don't think a listening audience or right. a reading audience really cares that much. I anymore. agree with you. And, and I, I think, think the world gonna... has gotten to where we don't like a, what objective, the new definition of objective is the way I think the world is. Right. It's, yeah. it's not something outside of and, me. And they're going to listen it's to that... what they want to hear. They're going to read what they want to read. And that's going to be it. Right. But he's also taken it for the fact that Taylor Swift, you know, what was that line she had in that one song about? running she wouldn't have to run so hard if she were a man and yeah all this and that they hire a national taylor swift reporter to report on this important feminist uh, <laughs> ideal and uh, it's a guy so yeah he responded by the way mr west responded to the calls of him being a taylor swift fan he says look i just came from Phoenix, I think, is where he lived. He just moved to Nashville, and he said they, everyone, every news anchor there, every serious news reporter was wearing Diamondbacks jerseys on set. So right. <laughs> not sure what everybody's talking about. Why am I taking it from journalism when that's what they do? Right. And I think George is right. It's changed to where now people don't care, which I think almost now people want their sportscasters to be cheerleaders, and they're mad if they're not. Right. And that's somewhere like that. That's a little warped, but it's why you see guys on national TV wearing jerseys of their teams and going crazy over them and getting really emotional over them. It's just, it's changed a lot in the 30 years that we've been doing this. Stephanie says Marin Morris is the singer that left country music. And I think Sloth, the Sloth was trying to tell you that as did report on that. I was trying to come up with the name. I was incorrectly saying it was Miranda Lambert. It was Marin Morris who left country music because local girl, she says they left her first. Um, yeah, that's from Stephanie and Keller. And she signs her email X O X O X O. Don't you always like it when girls kind of do that? She likes you. (laughs) Kind of like that. Uh, Dean, says he's 42 years of age and the deaths that he remember that hit him really hard celebrity deaths deaths were jim henson who i believe died pretty young jim he was 50s jim. also wasn't he or was he younger than that i think jim henson may have been in his 40s hmm. when he died john Let's candy see. yeah that was sad how old was he i think maybe all these guys were 42 henson was 53 oh <laughs> Henson was 53. John Candy was maybe 42. John Candy was... 43? 43. And Tupac, who I think was... Maybe he's in the 27 Club. Is Tupac in the 27 Club? He was 25. Oh, he's in the 25 (laughs) Club. But anyway, he said those were the celebrity deaths that hit him hard. Get this from Kelly. Hey, Gordon, I heard you read some semblance of my letter regarding horse breeding earlier this week. (laughs) And I was very, all caps, disappointed to hear you assume 
that I was a dude. I am a girl. Here, Uh-oh. Here's a picture I just finished yesterday with my family for our Christmas cards, and she included the picture. And Let's give that a look. Mm-hmm. Hey, I need to see that. She is a girl. That's true. Um, anyway, she says, I kept expecting the musers to point out that the 27 Club and the 54 Club that were discussed related because what is double 27? 54. God huh. is a numerologist. Hmm. You guys make my mornings. Thanks. Love P1 Kelly, who is a girl. Okay. She says. And that was K E L L E Y? Yes. As you yeah. said? Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm. Right. George that's... wants me to pass around yep. the picture. I think this is her with her husband and children. I think. But I'm assuming that's her there. She's the blonde. I need to take okay. a gander at that. Oh. Yeah. Let us know if that Christmas card has a crack in it next year. <laughs> John! You sicken me, sir. <laughs> Rooting for families to break no, no, up. I take that back. Okay, wait a minute. So you, just so you can have more material for your bank. Back. <laughs> this card makes it look like her name is Jackson. I don't because think the names are listed. Began in a man, a woman, a woman, and a man. And then it gives a couple. And the the male names is the and second names. one, yeah. which matches to a man. So I don't. I think he is pranking you. No, I don't think so. Kelly, if you would like me to send anatom, if you you could what? please send anatomical proof that you're a girl, I would appreciate that. Boy, listen to you. Well, it's only because he Yikes. had a question. I'm trying to be a good reporter, George. I'm just going to keep this from my You've file. Never tried oh, to be dude, a good reporter. Wait, what's wrong? Gross. Take a call, and then Three. we got to go. Okay, let's go to Colton and Denton. You're on the ticket. Good morning, boys. Um, so this is my question: If it's not Jerry who's putting Jimmy in, which Jones is putting him in? Is it going to be Spalding? That's all I got. Y'all have a good day. Do you think Spalding will eventually run the team? Mm, maybe. So hmm. Spalding is maybe. from the Charlotte line, I believe, right? Yep. Yeah. Now Steven is going to run the team. Right. When when Jerry mm-hmm. achieves his immortality um and goes to the great the great, wonderful ring of honor sky in the sky. Boxes. And if they just go in <laughs> the order. Sky bar in the sky. If they just go in order, Stephen will run it, and then Charlotte will run it, and then Jerry Jr. will run it. If they just go in order of age and who's likely to pass away first. So you don't think that it will pass from Stephen to one of the grandkids? No. No. It would go to Charlotte or Jerry Jr. You think Charlotte for sure. has interest in running the whole team? Yes. I think yeah. she likes controlling parts of the No, she would run well, it. now, but... She but, would eventually run it all. But keep in mind, she's not going to be the GM. You know, she's just going to run the team. Now, the question is, after Jerry Jr., who would get it? That's where Spalding comes into yeah. play. And uh, Walmart Yoler kid. But there's uh, but who's the one who's the real star athlete? That's Stevens. John Michael Stevens yeah. Jones. And that's isn't that Stevens that's one of kid. Stevens' kids? Mm-hmm. Will he be running it? Maybe. At that point. But he's younger than Spalding. Spalding's been around it longer. And he's been in on the draft room since he was like eight. I know. See, I think that we're going to see. I think if Jerry yeah. ever passes, that uh, that there will be massive coups <laughs> staged in that Jones family. I think it Power is going to be. Yes. It's going to be succession. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. All the, all the all the grandkids plotting against each other and getting Uncle Stephen put in a home to declared incompetent so they can <laughs> wrestle the team no away home. from him. <laughs> all right, Gordo, thank you. That is the corner. Get the musers podcast at patreon.com slash sports greek. No. Hey Justin! Welcome, welcome, welcome to week twelve of the Ebreak Fantasy League. It's a two-man race at the top, and I'm dangling to stay relevant like a dingleberry on EA's ass. The break came up all Sean this week as he was the only person to get any points. Mino got hurt butt when he forgot how to sit down. My chair. Oh, my God. I fell over. Are you okay? (laughs) No. I'm good. 
The man with the hot back was undrafted, so no help anywhere. Gordon took a break from browsing Reddit and watching guys get hit in the nuts to abruptly end a crosstalk. Yeah, at I the know most it. inopportune time on national television. Is that yeah. a period thong, man? Gordon is property of the talking sea bass, and Donovan broke all kinds of stereotypes by winning this week's e break with this joke. The only one I know is uh, lick a lot of. Oh my. my. I'm going to word this one differently and say Donovan is on Sean's team, giving him a whopping four points this week. We're now 12 weeks into season two, and Sean, no shrooms for me, Bass leads the way with 19 points. David, I fell on my ass to explain away the bruises. Mino has 18, and I, Justin, blue chew coursing through my veins. Monty has nine. Won't you die, Gosh, ham? Football- Bork. This week's e-break has already been yanked. But there's still plenty of misfires, misspeaks, and stop downs from the Tickets Broadcast Week. We've got the best of the rest. It's time for the NIT break. It is 2.37 on the sweet spot. Thank you so much for being by the channel. And without further ado, you heard Conrad. You know what this is. Let's throw it to Monty. Thank you so much, boys. Thank you, Justin. I'm glad we could do this again. I mean, Thank I you, like Daddy. the World Series and all that. <laughs> But we got to eh, hear one World Series is fine. The best of the rest. Back. So we have six candidates this week, as we do normally. But as a uh, honorable mention, <laughs> since we didn't get to do last week, you may not have heard this before, but our ticker man Kevin Landrum. Nice haircut, by the way, Kevin. He looks like a guy who'd have a nice mm-hmm. haircut. No, yeah, doubt. he was eating on the air. That's a hair retractable roof on my home. It's like a convertible house. You know how awesome that would be? That'd Except be great. Then they, they don't pay attention. They build a house next to you, go in the opposite direction, and you both open at the same time and smash into each other. They can share a roof, and then you have That'd to be like, fan- coordinate. That'd be using awesome. It. It'd be like skylights from the 80s, but you could open them. And a nice, brisk evening. Yeah. Open the... Uh... I'd open oh, the walk on your back porch. You wake up, there's a skunk in your house. What like, if you have you a, a McLaren situation where you can't get it closed? Yeah. Would be a bad. You eat the garage. What are you oh, doing? Oh, my fault. My fault. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just crunches. Just crunching. <laughs> what are you eating in there, Lando? <laughs> Jeez, man, this is a professional environment. Always funny. that. That's hilarious. I, I love how you ask the question and then you hear the. It's like he's asking a condescending question well, that he so knew cash. the answer to. Is like, yeah, what if you do this? <laughs> I kind of forgot there was a microphone here. Uh, I'm new here. I'm sorry. That's a tremendous crunch. Yeah. I just like the idea of you having the handful of granola and you just pop another one in. I have granola today, too. Heck yeah. yeah that is wild, Kevin. That is wild. <laughs> All right. So your six candidates this week. Candidate number one. So that doesn't one. count. No, that's just okay. an honorable mention. Okay. Don't worry. We'll hear from Lando again. Yes. Number one is the uh, producer of the invasion, one Travis Meet Mejia. So why is his week, nickname meet? Don't worry about it. Last week he had uh, some voice problems, which is a uh, an issue in this medium. I will not uh, cast stones as I live in a voice cracking glass house many times, but uh, that could be a problem. We're doing a forty liner on Sports Radio ninety six seven and thirteen ten. The ticket. Shout out to the player oh. of the day, Charles. <laughs> Head over to. The- <laughs> Head over to the ticket.com contest page and register to win two tickets to see Creed at Dos Equis Pavilion on September 11th, 2024 with special guests Three Doors Down and Finger 11. Tickets are on sale now at LiveNation.com. Yay. So that that was during the parade, right? Yeah. How do you not have better radio (laughs) instincts to say, you know what? We have a ticker guy who reads copy all the time. Let's just let him do the 40-liner. Yeah, but then we miss Creed. Creed. <laughs> yeah, there was a week I was dealing with laryngitis last year and had to miss a few days. And instead of reading the forty liner, I just wrote it into into the text to speak that we use to to say funny words okay. and oh, yeah. got us through it. Yeah, but somehow he's not at the parade, but his voice is gone right from screaming, presumably. I commend him for powering through being a, being a warrior. This is how I had my f- forty liners read. Queef. It was that. App. That wasn't a forty. It was liner? that one. Wow. 
That was the player of the day. What business is that? <laughs> Our player of the day, Queef. Come see Cactus. <laughs> queef. Oh, uh, well, Cannon speaking Queef. Of, oh God. Speaking of the uh, parade, you know, you get a lot of people out there. You get some technical issues. A we few. had some communication issues. I'm going to put this at the feet of Ray Davis mm. for owning the the Texas Rangers because he spent all that money on yeah. the middle infield because. You guys with the invasion were out at the parade, and we had Lando back here trying to keep you updated what was happening on TV, but the delay was so bad that y'all had the worst chemistry I've ever heard. <laughs> so the blaring music, Thank and I'm goodness. curious. We don't I have can, to scream anymore. I can, it's breathe. amazing. I'm curious if there's going to be some sort of address made up on yes. the stage. They have but, to be uh, wrapping up the Bochi parade route, right? is in yeah, the back of a truck. Yeah, you're fans though. making their way to this oh. empty parking lot. Go ahead, Lando. Uh, I was going to say, Bochi is in the back of the truck with the commissioner's oh, trophy. Off Lando. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Yes. Yep. Speak. Yep. So, Bochi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bochi in the back of the truck with the commissioner's trophy. He is hurling cans of chili into the crowd very dangerously, but he appears to be making his way towards that stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Right. Back to we go. Yeah, they cut the music for a reason. Yeah. Thank you. There's a little delay, so that's why uh, we just got to keep that uh, yeah. in mind. Hey, man. we're doing the best we can. We are. Gosh. It was like a four and a half second delay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And y'all would just stop, and then Lando would start talking again really fast. <laughs> y'all hurry up and hear him. Like maybe if he talks faster, it'll get to you faster. Because usually it's what? Half second, maybe, if it's a remote. A half yeah. second is considered a long time. Right. Like You can notice that, but yeah, that was that was at least four. Oh yeah, and y'all stop. There's that that silence, right? Hey, in yeah, the back of a truck, vans making their way to this oh. empty parking lot. Go ahead, Lando. Oh. I was gonna say, Bochi is in the back of a truck with the commissioner's oh, we trophy. We lost Lando <laughs> <laughs> as he's talking. We lost Lando, uh, as Lando. I just said. Well, we actually know we lost Lando. Uh, we're on top of it technically. We're good. <laughs> All right, that here. one's on Ray Davis. We're putting station. that one on Ray Davis. Candidate number three here on the NIT break is the aforementioned Lando, who uh, had a bit of a stumble at the end of a ticker. The ticker, ticker. ticker brought to you by Deep Ellum Brewing Company, celebrating 12 years of beers and all pro foundation repair.com. The Cowboys with a home matchup this week with the 2 and 7 Giants. Dallas winners of 12 of the last 13 games against the Giants, including five straight. Dallas also signing wide receiver Martavis Bryant to the practice squad this afternoon. The NFL recently reinstating Bryant from an indefinite, indefinite definite suspension in 2018, stemming from violations of the league's substance abuse policy in 2016. Cracked yourself up there. Yeah. In deficit. <laughs> yeah, he was an indefinite. Definite. Indefinite. <laughs> Tricky one. I definitely didn't type that word again in my tickers the rest of the day. Yeah, just go ahead and bail out. <laughs> he was indefinite, definite suspension. <laughs> he was suspended forever. It was definitely a it's suspension. Gone. <laughs> Cracking yourself up during a ticker is that's, that's just you've done it a few man. times. Oh yeah, yeah. Sean a, B. Yeah, Sean Hill. Sean B. Mm-hmm. Sean yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sean yeah. <laughs> uh, we need to bring back the tease. That was such a we fertile really ground for do. Yeah, Ham, let's do that. Uh, let's see, candidate number four here on the NIT break. Baldy, the ticker man of the mornings, heard all the play that Kevin's been getting by chiming in on air while eating. And he said, hold my cheese sandwich. But he placed $88,000 on an NHL parlay that ended up netting him uh, $1.3 million. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Wow, where yeah. do people have this just... Uh, 88 grand, whatever. Last night. And that's a very odd number also, just to put up 88 right. grand. Right. So he took the Sharks on the money line and under two and a half goals on the Penguins and Ducks and the Avalanche minus one and a half and Man. he's a millionaire. The Sharks with back-to-back 10-goal losses this season, he took them on the money line. What are you eating? Yeah, what's, uh, what's for lunch? Cheese sandwich. All right. Mm, just a cheese decided to... sandwich? No, it's not what you think. It is two pieces of cheese with uh, some pepperoni in between it. So it's not it, a I didn't cheese know that. sandwich. So is Technically, what? it kind of is. No, if there's meat in it, it's not just cheese sandwich. Have y'all seen those in the break room? The they cheese sandwich? They are disgusting looking. Talking about the Cumulus Cafe? They're in the cafe, and yeah, they're just two pieces of 
Some kind of white cheese with oh, wait. a piece of pepperoni in the middle. He bought one of those? He didn't yes. bring that from home? He had another it. one today. What a risky proposition. Dude. The only sandwich I know about from Cumulus Cafe is the PBJ, and it is elite level. That's yeah, great. It is good. Bob gets mad when, yeah, when anyone other, else eats them. Other people eat them. And one yeah. night during Diamond Talk, I just texted him a photo. I said, what now? <laughs> just a before and after. It's like, now it's gone. What are you going to do? But Baldy had such a killer line that mid- cheese sandwich bite he was like oh turn my mic on dude baldy knows a ton about hockey he just had to let mm-hmm. you know yeah and he's spewing cheese bits all over the ticker booth <laughs> i do think lando's is funnier because it's crunchy yeah and you can hear the crunch yeah i probably would have puked <laughs> if i heard baldy's cheese sandwich crunch though, is so. better than smack right that's what i've always said but in general just don't turn your mic on if you're eating as a, as, a, as a golden rule. Crunch is better than smack. Is that like an anti-drug campaign? <laughs> yeah, it is now, I guess. I yeah, like here, yeah, from the crunch candy Say no bar. to smack. Say uh, yes to crunch. All right, so Ryan Baldwin, candidate number four. Candidate number five here on the NIT break is uh, our little bitty tiny ham over there, wetting himself, eating chicken. So on Sunday morning, during ham radio, he explained... That the Rangers were causing him so much stress that he was getting a lip twitch. And he'd always look at me and point and go, look, and his lip would just be... It would just be hopping around. Like your Elvis? That's probably something to do with your diet. No. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah, it was a little elvis It stopped doing it since the Rangers won. Yeah, as soon as Spores hit that high curveball... It stopped. It's the strangest thing. (laughs) But uh, Ham had a hard time saying lip twitch. But yes, so something I guess somehow somebody somewhere affected me by waking up somehow late for falling back due to the time change and couldn't make me a pretzel. Shout out by the way to the uh, ticket board up because that guy got stuck with an extra hour tonight. Yes, mm-hmm. the overnight Pause. for a fallback. You didn't know who that was. Yeah, I didn't know who that was. Who? Okay. The overnight board up. We never know who the weekend overnight board up is. Okay. Still don't. I have no clue. Sorry, Tramel. Is it Donnie Henry? <laughs> Hasn't worked here in 15 years. Yeah. You know that. The worst. I remember doing that, and it sucked. Especially when you, you skip back to one. You mix them up, and you think, "Oh, I'm gonna, we're gonna hop ahead an hour," uh-uh. and then it just goes back to the hour you were just on. The worst. Mm. Yep. So there you the have it. Ham. ham radio. I got lip switched. Twitch. Your lips switched? And non pretzel. <laughs> it looked like your bottom gut. one was too high. Yeah. All right. Say a prayer. <laughs> say a prayer for him. His lip switch. Pray for a mercy killing. I got lip switched. I thought twitch. he was going to say. Your lip switch. Do you remember the child psychologist from the Rugrats? Anybody remember that from the 90s? The no, name of the doctor? No, no, what was it? It was doc- Dr. Lipschitz. Oh. Mm-hmm. That was his name, Dr. Lipschitz. Okay. And that was on Nickelodeon, on Rugrats. And you could say it. Kids TV. Yeah. Great show. G-rated. Yeah. Yep. Right up there with uh, Shit's Creek as far mm-hmm. as my, <laughs> mm-hmm. one of my faves. So Lip Switch Ham, who just did a 180 on him mid-talking, <laughs> is can number five. Our last candy here on the NIT break is DJ Ringenberg. Ooh. And I laughed so hard when I heard this live. He forgot when 40 liners have to be read. Hit the Hardline Helpline every day at 3.30 on Sports Radio 96.7 and 1310, The Ticket. The Musers want to send you to the Cowboys game on Thanksgiving. This is the wrong time to be reading this. Here's the Hardline. Joel Klatt. Mm. Joel Klatt. All right. We're all doing great. Uh, we're at the dive bar. Joel Klatt. <laughs> So that was at 5.15 yeah. instead of 5.30? Yeah. And he realized Man. immediately, this is the wrong time to be reading. That's I wonder, incredible. I wonder what's worse, reading one when it's the wrong time or forgetting you have one. I think the panic is worse when it's 5.30 and you hear the music and you're just sitting there like, oh, crap. Got to go into my email, find the 40 line or find the right one. Sometimes you just pick a random one to read. But yeah, You've done that too. Yeah. We, we've all done it. We've done it at the wrong time. Man, I love that one. All right. Let's do the voting. Who is the NIT break winner? Is it Travis? Is it Ray Davis? Is it Kevin Landrum, Ryan Baldwin, Ham, or DJ? We'll start with you, Lando. DJ. All right, Ham. 
Ray Davis. Okay, Sean. I will also vote for Ray Davis in the technical e break. Mm-hmm. Mino. Yeah. Ray Davis spending all that money. All right. Only I would Ray, vote for DJ, but that won. doesn't matter. So Ray Davis. Wow, looks like he's won his first NIT break. Way to go, Ray Davis. The World Series trophy. Yeah. What a week. NIT break championship. Hold he's, on. Let me I just got a note. Okay. No one has ever won a World Series and an NIT break within one week of each other. Never happened. That is incredible. Might not ever happen again. Did you get that per Elias Sports? I did. Period? Okay. Thank you, Justin. That is the NIT break. We'll award another one next week at the same time. Right now, it's 250. Why Today Doesn't Suck is next. Once again, the ticket presents Why Today Doesn't Suck. Sucking on chili dogs. Sucking on a dog. Sucking on a chili dog. Sucking on chili. Sucking on a dog. Sucking on a chili dog, sucking on chili dogs. And now, here are your hosts, Sean Bass and David Mino. Friday Sweet Spot, and at 3 o'clock, here's Ham. Oh, wow. Thank you, Mino. Eatsy's Market and Bakery and Sante Center for Healing brings you Mashed Potato Monty. Thank you, Ham. Hope your lip gets better, bud. It's switched. I know. Twitched. <laughs> We say hello to the hardline who is not here. They must not- be off today. It's kind of like we're off because we're partying. Whoa. Oh, mm. where are we partying? I'm the guy that parties. No, Deep no, Ellen no, no, Brewing, no. bro. I, I, my name is Rod, and I like to party. You I'm Sean. I party. Like party. No, you don't party. I'm the one that parties. I'm David. I party. <laughs> oh, Rod. <laughs> oh, my God. Funny movie. Get over it. Seriously, get over it. The best. Okay, Deep Ellum Brewing. Deep Ellum Brewing. Whiskey. Oddly enough, fellas in Deep Ellum. Whoa. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Here we it's grow, Deep time. Ellum. There's like a high rise going on right behind us. I know. Do a little Chiba Hut action. Man, I'm jealous. Ooh, Ooh they give you some Kool Aid. And they finish warm. Mm. <laughs> yes, man. right. But yeah, we're down here at Deep Ellum Brewing, so come down. We'll be here till 7 and beyond. And beyond. You're going to be there till the last P1 leaves? I will be. That is my promise. I'm hearing reports that... 701. That may not happen. <laughs> or until the first P1 come. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's I'm Friday line four guys. Comes right to there. the remote. I'm actually disappointed Shows that Dave up. didn't issue that line. It's a little <laughs> slow so far. He'll get going. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't had my first drink yet. He's still eating his PB&J from Chiba Hut. Well, today is Friday, November 10th, the 314th day of 2023, but 51 days left in the year. On the state, in 1775, the U.S. Marine Corps was organized under the authority of the Continental Congress. Ah, uh, yeah. That gave us Arlie Ermey. Mm. The Continental Congress. Ah, yes. In 1969, the children's educational program Sesame Street made its debut on national educational television, later renamed PBS. Love it. Libs. Great theme song. Still good. <laughs> Although, Does it still watch? Day. I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, I, got it. I, have a, I have a fun fact. And now... <laughs> I realized pretty young. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't know. It was me or you. Um, I realized pretty young that I didn't really like Sesame Street. Hmm. Were you an electric oh. company guy? I loved electric company, but I just loved cartoons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I realized I liked cartoons way more than weird puppet things. You know when... That's why you hate Jeff Dunham. When Sesame Street jumped the shark is when everyone could see Snuffleupagus. Yeah. Yeah. Bummer. Anyway, my fun fact was the uh, theme for Sesame Street was written by the same guy who wrote the theme for Three's Company. Oh. What's his name? (laughs) 
So anyway, so, <laughs> that's all I got. Really, uh, I, mean, I didn't fun know fun if there was like a string of fun facts coming, or we just no. Nah, that was it. Okay. That was it. No. Uh, on the state in 1990, the Phoenix Sun shattered the NBA record with 107 points in the first half of their victory over the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> 107. The gorilla had a dozen off the bench. <laughs> Ooh, that's how I should hood up. Yeah. Go to the Phoenix wow. wholesale the store. They end up winning 173 to 143. Good mascot or bad mascot? The gorilla. Great mascot. Great mascot. Yeah. Why don't you guys get your gorilla costume straight from the Suns? That's a good idea. Right? Justin? Yeah, why hasn't anyone you said think that, that yet? <laughs> yeah. Because he played the gorilla as a human. Ah. Uh-huh. I'll have y'all lower me down during wow. ticket stock. <laughs> like Rocky? Yeah. And you just pass out? And I'll pass out, yeah. You'll see the lemon wedge fall <laughs> Funniest video I've ever seen. My leg hole. <laughs> <laughs> His body's just lifeless yeah. as it gets to the floor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in 2017, facing allegations of sexual misconduct, comedian Louis C.K. said the harassment claims by five women that were detailed in the New York Times report were true. Mm. He had Always good ones. to get ahead about ahead of it by just saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I, yeah, did yeah, it. I, fin- I finished warm. Yeah, yeah uh, I did it. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Tig Notaro was in the room. Yeah, what are you going to do? Warm. Oh man, so much sexual and en- energy coming off of that woman. <laughs> And in 2021, Kyle Rittenhouse took the stand in his murder trial, testifying that he was under attack and acting in self-defense when he shot and killed two men during the turbulent night of street protest in Wisconsin. Hmm. That's when we got never, the uh, the crime. He never made Rittenhouse it to A&M, meme. did he? Like that was his big thing. Oh, go to A&M. Yeah, he was in the portal. What? He never went, did he? No, I'm pretty sure no, he's, I think the, he's the leader of the core. Yeah, he's okay. the yell leader now. <laughs> I don't Hanky, think Hanky. Hanky. He ended up, I think he ended up at El Centro. <laughs> hey guys. Hey L. Hey, L. Hey, L. Are you a man, L? Or are you Al? Hey guys. Al, Al Centro. Centro. <laughs> oh Al. You can never yeah. tell. <laughs> All right, P one birthdays. Dear why today doesn't suckers. Today is the forty eighth birthday of Wichita Falls' own Tim McCraw. His leaders are Jesse the Usher and Bruce Bochy's chili stained mustache. I hope his wife woke him up in a special way. He would like to hear the inappropriate Steve Busby drop of Ham's choosing. Love from P1, Ben Coker. Tim McGraw. Ben Coker. McCraw. Uh, the great Ben, ben Coker. Coker. Ben Coker's great. Ben Coker's great. Number two all up. Hmm. All right, this from- really fisted here. It's a good thing it's a warm night. That won't hurt quite as badly. It finished warm. Like that guy's like, thank God oh, it's kind of hot out here. It's good. And he gets fisted. And they finish warm. <laughs> this from GK. Birthday shout out to a great coworker, Stephanie. She's having knee <laughs> surgery next week and wanted to wish her all the best. Donovan is her leader. A joke from Line 4 guy, please. Oh, my goodness. Is she having well, skin grafts on her knee? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, First, I have guy. to address the uh, the doctor from Rugrats, uh, Doctor Lipschitz. Yes. Well, what does his ass do? I don't know. What well, does it what do? What does his ass do? If it's if it's never look, mind. It looks oh, I thought this yeah. was the joke. No, uh, <laughs> this was pretty sharp. Uh, that one. <laughs> How are a nearsighted gynecologist and a puppy dog? The same. Okay. Don't they know. both have a wet. They both have a wet nose. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta go. get really up in there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> then he gets donut glazed nose. Oof. Oof. Or whatever. If his lip shits. <laughs> yeah. Doctor Lip Doctor Shits. Lip shits. Yes, That's yeah. his name. MD. Yep. From Shits Creek, the show. No Rugrats. Oh. Somebody not shit's crazy. It's tough. I'd like to wish my husband Aaron, not A. A. Ron, Key and Peel ruined his life. A wonderful 37th birthday. I will wake him up in that special way tomorrow on his actual birthday. His hero, 
is the buffer scramble that interferes with the broadcast in Jub. He'd like to hear Davey's attempt to sing Mandinka, followed by Corby's rendition of Sting's Desert Rose. Okay. Thank you from the girl who made the Bochy 7 Alarm Chili shirt, Madison. Yeah, she's awesome. She deserves whatever she wants. I do know. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Always awesome. Uh, Brent says, happy birthday to my brother-in-law and sportsmate, fellow P1, Kyle. He's a faithful ag. No way. Where's Desert Rose in this? I hear keyboard clacking. I think we're looking for it. He's a faithful ag. He'd like to hear Tom Gribble's bird sing the Aggie War Hymn. Mm, that's old <laughs> favorite. That I think we're building up a queue over yeah, here. Yeah, that's, oh a, that's a tough one. It builds <laughs> up, dude. And uh, uh, Monty, to tomorrow is the birthday of longtime P1 Jason the Dangler. His sports mm. heroes are former Rangers John Wetland and Chad Curtis. Mm. Mm. He doesn't need a Ranger drop Hall request of for his birthday. Mm. He just wants to dangle. Mm. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> pretty spot on. All right, we got a few birthdays to get to here. Sunday, cumulus birthdays. Buy him all the granola you can find. No, no. Don't tell me. Kevin Landrum turning. 36. The big 3-6. 3-6 Mafia. This explains the haircut. (laughs) Yeah, he's getting ready for a wild weekend. The CJ Wilson birthday. Yeah. The Jerome Bettis. Happy birthday, plans, Lando. Lando. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Way to go, Lando. We're going to go balls deep in some Nature Valley? You know, that is that is my plan, yeah. Sweet. Nice dinner on Sunday. Lando. Sounds like you're really going to be living Lando. up this weekend. Lando. All right, Roland Emmerich is 68. He's got a fake turd in his pocket. You guys, you guys know my bit with Lando that I can't say his name without saying it in the same tone that Django is sung in the movie. Huh. Lando. Yes, as I just said. <laughs> There's a delay. Oh. Lando Unchained. So uh, reiterate. Sinbad is 67. <laughs> Might want to check that. Uh, Was he a defensive tackle? Eight. Yeah. Yeah. Don't gave me the head State. nod. Yep. I saw him the armadillos. In, I saw him in his car on campus when they were filming and he gave me a head nod. Did you get a no, photo he, with him too? No. Go no. Dave. He did um, not stop. Michael J. Maybe. White is 56. Spawn. He was a mob boss in the Dark Knight. Tracy Morgan, 55. Funny? Yes. Not funny? Yes. Funny. Brian Fellow. That last show he did on uh, TNT was really good. Didn't he or TBS, win rather. millions from Walmart in a lawsuit? Yeah. Yeah, he got ran over or something, didn't he? Yeah. By a Walmart? Yeah. By, by a Walmart truck. Mm. He's got a fake turd in his pocket. Mm. Ellen Pompeo from Grey's Anatomy and Old School, 54. Ellen Warren Pompeo. G, Her maker stinks. of many, many hits, is 53. You God of the Wu-Tang Clan is also 53. The absolute great Walton Goggins is 52 mm. today. Oh, Baby Billy. Man. He is incredible. Bob's Bible Bonkers. Venus Van Dam and Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got some big old juggeroonies in that show. Big Venus Van Dam. I mean, none of them are quite Shane in the Shield, though, right? No. Yeah, but he never had well, the same fate that Shane had in these other shows. That's real sad. You would like funny Walton Goggins way more than over the top, crazy, corrupt cop Walton Goggins. He was also a home run hitter in Major League Three. I know you think that you've lived righteous Look gemstones, Bob, but you have not. Yeah, but it, it's never once, Bob. Uh, he won't I won't watch it. I just haven't got around to it, bro. I, I've had enough bro. over the top church. <laughs> Danny life. McBride is like really different <laughs> in the show, it. though. It's a it's a yeah. big departure for Danny range. McBride. Danny McBride okay. and Walt Goggins. God bless them. <laughs> You won't even recognize you Danny McBride. have no. run back the same character several times. It'll not, be season three before you're I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not saying this one. Is that I'm Danny saying... McBride? 
as he's really confident but kind of dumb, making big, robust claims. You'll be like, wait. No way. (laughs) In a role you've never seen before. Oh, but now he's a pastor. Okay. Uh, Diplo, the DJ, 45. Diplo. (laughs) Diplo. Mm. Eve is 45. Josh Peck from Drake and Josh, 37. Is that Eve 6? Or what Eve are we talking about? The rapper Eve from Ah. the Rough Riders. Lady rapper. Taron Egerton is 34. He's awesome. He's hot for everybody. He is. Put your tender heart in a blender. (laughs) He's he's the king's man. Sports birthdays, we got a lot as well. Les Miles, 70. What are you, a cowboy? Go talk to Les Miles. Mike McCarthy is 60 years old today. Big no, man. No, no, football, no, football, 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 football. Kenny Rogers, 59. The gambler. No. Killed a man, Dante Stallworth, 43. No. No. Chris Canty, 41. The Canty oh, man. Cowboy. The future of NBA cool face media. Mask. Kendrick Perkins, 39. No. A guy that I'm surprised Daddy hasn't pitched to us yet, DJ Augustine, 36. I'm sure he has. Uh, he's in the queue. Yo. I was a classically trained singer. Uh, Michael oh. Choice, 34. Wow. Uh, Ranger? No way. And he yeah. joins us. And he joins us now. <laughs> also the future of sports media, Manuel Acho, 33. Uh, me, too. Oh. For media. Uh, turning uh, 31 today, Teddy Bridgewater. Mr. Excuse Choice? me, Teddy yeah. Bridgewater. Sorry. Yeah. What do you so, think of the Rangers, Michael? They are. They got a. They got a ring. Uh, Michael, oh, could you? So, would you mind sending Doug Free in here for a second? <laughs> hey, what's going on, Bob? <laughs> oh, and hey, from I, you. I gotta tell you, everybody loves Raymond. The I taught Terrence Steele everything I know. <laughs> Love everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, you're not doing so well. Kind of petering you? out there, what, huh? Yeah. What's your favorite color, Doug? Run out of content there, uh, Michael. Yeah, back to Michael now. Oh, oh, oh it's Michael. <laughs> you see, I'm a little lower. Than Doug is up here. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Lock, 27. Scotty Pippen Jr., 23. Born on the state, now dead. Roy Schneider from Jaws. Gonna need a bigger Roy. button. Mikhail Kalishnikov, the inventor of the AK-47. Why does that make you laugh? I don't know. Just saying you invented a gun <laughs> is funny to me. Big Pun, the rapper. He was uh, Fat Joe's mentor. Mm. So you might say mm-hmm. he played a hand in Fat Joe leaving Atlantic. Mm. And Brittany Murphy, star Ooh. of 8 Mile. Oh, no. Gone to King soon. of the Hill. Yeah. Greatness. And uh, I hope you guys don't need a board op today, Hardline. Because you're about to lose yours. Down the stay and still dead in 2022. Voice actor Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. Oh, wow. Oh. Five. Sorry, boys. Four, I'm packing it up. Three. Ham two, almost peed himself when I told him. You're done. Shut it down! But he went to see Let's Dr. Lipschitz and he's fine. And they finish warm. Hello. Bye, Michael. Bye, Justin. Bye, Bye Michael. Bye, Bye Doug. The TXU Bye, Energy Doug. Mothership hey, at Victory be? Park, hard by the Doug. AAC. And here he is, Dave. Dave, 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 Dave. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Dave. All right, so in December of 1964 was a momentous occasion. 1964. As, yes. As the Beatles single, I Feel Fine, jumped from number 22 to number 5 in its second week on the chart. And in doing so, it leapfrogged over the Rolling Stones' Time Is On My Side, which was at number 6. So you had the Beatles at 5 and the Rolling Stones at 6. Um, what year? 1964. This is going to be an awesome story, isn't yeah. it? So that was the first time that the Stones and the Beatles were both in the top ten of a Billboard chart together. Okay? Now it's 59 years later, mm-hmm. and they are once again back in the top ten of a Billboard chart. God. Now, this is a little bit of a workaround because it's the adult alternative airplay chart. 
me. That's all right. It's not like the Hot 100, like well, the original. Well, they're not going to be on the Hot yeah. 100. Uh, but the uh, SZA, the, the Beatles, now and then debuted at this week on this week's uh, Adult Alternative Airplay chart at number nine, and the Rolling Stones' "Angry" is up to number six. It's been on the chart for nine weeks, and it's moved up to number six. So, fifty-nine years ago. Yeah, fifty-nine years apart, they are back together at the top of a chart. You know, and Roger Maris was playing baseball with Mickey Mantle. Oh, my God, dude. Like, that's the Koufax era. And oh, yeah. We're bringing it back to sports. Dude. That might have been before Ali left boxing for three and a half years. Okay, could you have told? Oh, for sure. He hadn't even won the Olympics yet, had he? Or is that uh, like he 60? He won in 60, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, if you would have told McCartney and Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, you got him in a little circle and said, all right, not only are you going to be alive... Yeah, I'm a time traveler from 2023. Yeah, but you're both going to have a song that is charting with your the band that you're in right now. Yeah, there's no way they would believe As it. As they thought they were probably going to die before they reached 35. Yeah, they thought they would make it to the 80s. <laughs> is it the yeah. equivalent of, like, the Andrews sisters charting in 2000? <laughs> Dude, it, yeah, it kind of is, <laughs> it, right? It's got to be, right? With the Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. <laughs> well, what year was that stuff? Uh, World War II, so, so what, the 41 mid-40s? or 42 probably. So that takes yes. you to 2001. Oh, 1989, God. right? The Andrews Sisters <laughs> resurgence. Patty and Laverne. You're right. I don't believe the Andrews Sisters are up for a Grammy this year. Let me check. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, uh, but the Rolling Stones, in fact, are. Uh, so, first of all, it's the 67th Grammy Awards. They just announced the nominations today, and you just mentioned SZA. Yeah. She is the leading nominee. She has nine. Uh, far and away, the leading nominee. SZA. Uh, so. Do I know SZA's work? Let's Well, let's start with Record of the Year. No. And let's see how many of these you guys know. Okay. Uh, there's Heard of or no? Heard of. All right. Worship by John Bap- uh, Baptiste. No. It's a wrestler. John Baptiste is, that's uh, uh, Stephen Colbert's music guy. Yeah. Uh, Not Strong oh, Enough by guy. Boy, Boy Genius. Dude. I'm familiar with Boy Genius. Flowers by Miley Cyrus. Yeah. That's the one that sounds like Donna Summer. Yeah, it's a good, I can buy myself flowers. It's a good summer song. Write my name in the sand. It was the most overplayed song of the summer. Uh, <laughs> what I Was Made For by Billie Eilish from the Barbie soundtrack. Greatness. Heard it once at the movie. Victoria Monet on my mama. Victor- what? Mm. I don't know. I don't know her. Olivia Rodrigo, Vampire. I know what she looks like. I don't know the song. Taylor Swift, Antihero. Don't know it. And SZA, Kill Bill. Don't know it. That's the one... Um, she sings about I'm killing her boyfriend or you know, her lover. You know what Olivia Rodrigo looks like from that iPhone commercial? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so best rock song. I would go out with her. She appears to do sit Is she legal yeah. now? What? She's, she's not 18? She's 21, I think. Oh, okay, high school right. girl. She's only sure? 21? Just making sure. Lando's check. Well, now I'm creeped out. I need to wait a year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she used to be in high school musical. I didn't know that. I don't know anything about her. So, high school girls, huh? Yeah, right up your alley. It's college. College. Yeah, you're got, you're into high school girls, and drop. he's into Latinas, so you guys are going to have to duke it out. She was born Ooh. in 2003. Yeah, she's like Evan Kinda Carter's like age. I need to... She's older Probably than Derek that. Lively. Yeah. All right, so best rock song, Rolling Stones, Angry, is What if nominated. he and I fought, like in a cage match, for the right... For her, but she didn't care about either one of us. The right to date Olivia Rodrigo, yeah. and then the winner just yeah. bloody shows up at her door, and she's like, "What? what who are you?" Yeah, you have to I go over to the table that. and say you won the right to date her. I, I won you. Yeah, aren't you like seventy? In a joust. I don't know. <laughs> so, best rock song: Rolling Stones, "Angry." Yeah. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age, "Emotional uh, Emotion Sickness." Sweet. Olivia Rodrigo, "Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl." Foo Fighters Rescued, and Boy Genius Not Strong Enough. Uh, and these will be of 
great interest to you, Corby. Federal interest. As Jason Isbell and the 400 unit have been nominated for Best Americana Performance for oh. King of Oklahoma. Oh, really? Americana? So wait. Dave, would you repeat that, please? Uh, well, also, Jason Isbell and the 400 Unit have been nominated for Best American Roots Song oh, for what? Cast Iron Skillet. Oh, I'm Ooh. sorry. Oh, we have I... another subgenre to make you feel better. Right. Roots. Uncountry. And they have been nominated for Best Americana Album what? for Weather Veins. Who, whoever would say that except, oh, me. They're all under me. the entire circus tent of country. Me. Americana. Thank you. I can go home and die happy now. Uh, Taylor Swift had six Grammy nominations. Overrated. And so she kicked off her International Eras Tour. And she'll win, too. Last night in Buenos Aires. And she performed two surprise songs, uh, The Very First Night and Labyrinth. And Labyrinth (laughs) evidently has a lyric. She says, oh, no, I'm falling in love again. Which everyone was like, oh, oh my gosh, that's oh, about Travis Kelsey. Oh, Travis. She's oh. talking about Travis. You know what the best part Don't. is going to be about this relationship is when they break up and how the entire world turns on him. Right. He just didn't love her properly. So Kelsey was not there. He was at Patrick Mahomes' charity event for the Mahomes Foundation uh, You know last why? Because he doesn't love her enough. Uh, she has rescheduled her concert tonight due to bad weather. So she's playing uh, tomorrow night, and then she moved tonight's show to Sunday. And supposedly, uh, Travis Kelsey is going to be there. Uh Uh-huh. That it is the Chiefs bye week. And so, you know, he does the podcast with Jason. Yeah. And he he suggested that, uh, you know, he might take a trip on his bye week. And he says, I may say F it and go somewhere nice. My skin's getting real pale. I may go somewhere sunny. And then uh, Jason was like like somewhere near the equator, so they were you know kind of intimating yeah. that he might go to Argentina. Um, as for will she fly him down there in her jet? Like, will it come back to pick him up to take him down there? Is that how these things work? Maybe. Or is he going to like in Group Seven at Amer- or Group Nine with DJ? Uh, in the American oh, Airlines take a flight, shot at DJ. Well, DJ was in an unknown group when we flew back from Los like Angeles. He was the only one in yeah, that group. He was just standing there. If like, there was wait. any room left, <laughs> okay, Group Nine. It's your stupid next segment. <laughs> Would she? Uh, is she going to dump him for Isaiah Pacheco or anything like that? Do you think? Oh, how great would that be? That'd be amazing. Like a five foot three running back, right? <laughs> he just gets me. Has she ever? Uh oh. Go on. Gone running black. Dave wants to ask a question. We know where you're all headed, that, Dave. That is even stopping him down. I just imagine the I'm gravity just, of such a question. I'm just wondering how many flavors at Baskin Robbins she has tried. Hopefully all of them. Because, you know, that's like Bob has had more ethnicity than I have, and I'm kind of bummed about that. He's had one. Right. I've had none. So white doesn't count? White yeah, vanilla doesn't, doesn't count. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, speaking of Jason Kelsey. This Sorry, is... white people. You're not an ethnicity. <laughs> you're not. You're not a flavor. No. Mark. You're gross. Uh, by the way, speaking of Jason Kelsey, so he was in Chicago the other night. I guess he was uh, visiting his buddy, Andrew Whitworth, because <laughs> Andrew Whitworth is a analyst for Thursday Night Football. He is, indeed. I wouldn't know because I don't watch Thursday Night Football. Well, apparently 10 million people watched last night Bears and Panthers, it which terrible. beat every World Series game. So Whitworth's friends with Jason or Travis? Jason. Jason. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so the two of them stopped uh, by a very famous hot dog stand in Chicago called the Wiener Circle. Have you ever been dog? there? I haven't. I have. Have you ever been there? No. Okay, so... The Wiener Circle is very famous because they are very rude at the counter. Like, if you don't know the code, if you don't know how to order, or if you're unprepared with your order, they send you to the back of the line. Oh, my God. Shut up! I would get so nervous. Yeah, it's very very stressful to order there, but it's awesome. It's very, very good Chicago dogs. And I don't think they do this anymore, but they would have a lot of – 
African American ladies that would work there. Uh huh. And that if you ordered a chocolate milkshake with your char polish, they would pull up their shirt and jiggle their breasts at you. For real? Yeah. Huh. And then you would have to tip them. It was it was part sure. of the whole bit. Quid anyway, pro, pro. anyway, so Jason Kelsey and Andrew Whitworth went to go visit, and so on the marquee outside, you know, I have the Wiener Circle logo, and then below it it says, "Welcome Taylor's boyfriend's brother." <laughs> Good bit. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Good bit. Good and bit. Uh, lastly, uh, I won't do this because it'll annoy you. They're going to turn that uh, Elon Musk. A biography into a biopic. Great. That's good. That's awesome. I'm so happy for him. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, but no, uh, this is going to be of great interest to our old friend Tyronius Walker. Okay. As what? Anthony Daniels, who famously played C3PO. He's going to try out for the Rangers. Friend of the day. No, he has a personal. Shore up that bullpen. He has a personal collection of costumes, props, and scripts. That he is going to auction off this weekend through the UK auctioneer site Prop Store. And so, uh, some of the things he's auctioning off the script that he used in uh, production of The Empire Strikes Back with his handwritten notes on it. I've seen uh, it. Parts of the Millennium Falcon that they were going to burn in a bonfire after they finished production of Return of the Jedi, and he just grabbed him off the bonfire. Smart. And uh, then he also is going to auction off his C-3PO helmet from oh A New God. Hope, the original oh my God. C-3PO helmet. So that is going to go for mm-hmm. expected at least $1.22 million. With his head inside? No, he's not going to be decapitated in the yes. helmet. Because it would be yeah. worth more if he did that. Do you think Ty would get, get it stuck? Yeah. In his Can't, butt? No. Like what? Like helmet effing it? <laughs> Dave. <laughs> and that's your news. I, I picture you're trying it on. Oh. You don't oh. need to. <laughs> we were trying He's to. just got it stuck in one of the eye sockets. <laughs> I picture him trying to sit on it. <laughs> that's never been said before. And it should be said. Yeah. Well, you know, it's Friday. It is Friday. It's Friday. All right. Good stuff, David. Get the steak podcast at patreon.com slash sports Greek. All right. We have a lot to get to, and we begin tonight at the Granada with the paper kites. Yay. This, this seems <laughs> Nora, right up on. your Americana alley. This is not Americana. This is pop. Is it? Ding, 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 ding. Does it did they sing? Yeah, they get there sometime. I like when Norm just bursts. This said Americana. All right, soft stuff. All right, then let's move on to the Cambridge Room. Grant Perez at the Echo Lounge. Peter McPoland at Club Dada. Sounds like your fake friend from Canada. (laughs) Peter McPoland. Yeah. (laughs) At Club Dada, Mass of the Fermenting Dregs. Oh yes, that's got to be a. No, it's not, surprisingly. It's not? No. I listened to it. It's not. Uh, at Trees, Lil Flip. Whoa. Whoa. At the studio at the factory, The Brook and the Bluff. At the factory, The Big Room, LS Dream. Just wait for it. Wait. Mm. This is tonight, right across the uh, right across the way? Yeah, can we turn up the send a little bit? Woke up this morning. <laughs> this sounds right up your alley, Dave. It, uh, well, I mean, it's oh. stylized like LSD. Yeah. It's... Yeah, you're you're meant to be tripping your balls off at this show. Oh uh, wow! <laughs> at Arlington Music Hall tonight, the Gatlin Brothers. Oh my God! Ty will be there at the the Colony Five Star Complex Vertical Horizon. Okay, they have a song. Yeah, like a big That's song. About it. Yeah, it was a '90s song, and if I, I, I listen I listen to it, and it takes so long to get there. I couldn't play. Is that it. Not it? I don't remember. Tonight at the BioFreeze USA Pickleball Championships. 
Philip, Corby. Philip Phillips. What? Is that the American Idol guy playing pickleball? I guess. No way. And by the way, Ham, you're not allowed to put that down on my bingo card because I was lured into pickleball. I didn't. What All is, right. What does that mean? Tonight at he Tulips. Knows. You can't mention pickleball and then, yeah, I know what he's doing. Tonight at Tulips Fort Worth, the Deer Hunter. And I'll get even with you. D-E-A-R right. Hunter. Go get your gun, get your gun, and let's find out what it does. Shoot, 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 shoot. They have a banjo. What is this? Americana. Yeah, this is Americana. Not even close. Tonight at Tannehill's Tavern, Periphery. Six Flags. And at Billy Bob's, Josh Ward. Tomorrow at Echo Lounge, one of my daughter's current faves, Laffy. Or Lafay. I think it's Laffy. No, that's not it. She's like a cabaret singer. Don't you know? Where did your daughter find her? I don't know. Spotify. I think this is big on TikTok right now. Yeah. 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 You think, huh? You're yeah, not, yeah you're evidently not this, say I'm sure. it pops up on my feed every now and then, Bob. <laughs> okay. You can say you're sure. Evidently this show is super sold out from what I hear. At Granada tomorrow night, the Dirty Governors. Governor. At Club Dada, Betcha. At Trees, JMSN. Or Jimson? Jimson. Jimson. At Lee Harvey's Bandolero. Oh, the, they're all here. Uh, the tribute Alex. to... The entire Bandolero band is here. The Grateful Dead. At the Factory, Steven Sanchez. At Ferris Wheeler's Green Sky Bluegrass. At the Shift 4 Arena in Arlington, DJ Pauly D. Whoa! From Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. Shore. Jersey yeah. Shore. <laughs> 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 All right, will people be there, like, in droves because of him? Yeah, probably. I don't. Do you know what the Shift 4 Arena is? Shift 4? Careful. Shift 4 Arena? No, I've never heard of it. I think that's at Texas Live. I oh, a, it is? I have a coworker who's going to that. That fits. All right. At Tulips uh, you Fort think Worth, or you know, I know. Okay. At Tulips Fort Worth tomorrow night, Joe Pug at Lola's Dusu, Casey Hess, really, uh, and at Bass Performance Hall. I don't understand this. The Fort Worth Symphony with Cinderella. Whoa! No, what? You gotta go, Bob. Cinderella? Yes. Is that cherry pie? Pop. No. Oh, no, that's pop, Warren. Pop, pop. What are they? Cinderella is uh, uh, seventeen. Uh, She's only seventeen. No, no. Uh, Hold uh, on. Uh, uh, so, uh, high school girl. Can't huh? remember. Had it, Bob. I'm disappointed. No, no. I'm you. sorry. I I'm blanking out on what the big one was from Cinderella. Hold on. I'll get there. Ham, you should pull it up. Doggone it! I should have put it on there. I'm sorry. Yeah. You Don't really know should. what you got. Yeah. Is that- till it's gone. Okay. Nobody's full. Oh, yeah, nobody's full. That's right. All right, Sunday at Granada, the Dude, Japanese house. We don't need crank, to play that. Crank nobody's full. No, don't play that. Oh, don't play that. Cool. But play uh, play the next one at sundown Sunday, Gene Loves Jezebel. What? Sundown at the Granada? Yes, they're playing the small room. Are you going? Going. No, probably not. What is wrong with you? Because we're having the... We have the baby shower on it's Sunday. It's after the baby shower. Cha cha. What happened to Dave? I'm I know. A dude. It's I'm so lame these days. <laughs> uh, Sunday at the House of Blues, Justin Quillies? Quills? Queef. Justin Queef. Uh, at Club Dada, Des Rocks. At the factory, Faye Webster. Sunday at AT&T Stadium, I guess related to Cowboys and Veterans Day. Come on. Lee Greenwood. Yes. At the game? Yes, I think so. Okay. Dude, he's every every year. At the game. There. I don't know if he's doing halftime or before the game or after the game. I have no idea. I All of the I couldn't above. find out. I couldn't find it. On this is the weekend of the Marine Corps birthday. All right. If he's playing, will he play this song? Uh, he'll probably skip it. Yeah. Thank my lucky star. He'll probably make the crowd chant for it. And they'll be like, okay, I'll play it. Because the flag still stands for freedom. Oh, I can't take that. Everybody stand up and salute. 
What? Come on. And I'm proud to be an American. For at least I know I'm free. And I'm all right. Alex, shut up. I'm Mexican. You're Mexican, yeah. Stand up. DJ doesn't even understand the lyrics to this. All right, we got to get through the rest of this. At Tannehill's Tavern on Sunday, drive by truckers. Wait. Sunday. Bingo. Really? Tannehill's Tavern, drive by truckers. Yes. In Fort Worth? Yes. At Billy Bob's at the Texas Country Music Awards on Sunday, Cody Canada and the Departed. Big night in Fort Worth. Damn it. I'm going to be there Saturday night. Monday at Cambridge Room, Addison Grace. Uh, we can skip this next one, Ham, but at the House of Blues, Alt-J. At the Southside Ballroom on Monday. Alt-J, the one with the drummer and guitar player? That's right. I have no idea. Yeah, That's a is. lot of bands. Uh, at Southside Ballroom <laughs> on Monday, famous transsexual Kim Petras. We, we have to dump out of this before she starts cussing. Yeah. F, 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 S, 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 S. Well, I, Corby just <laughs> chanted over it. Never mind. Golly. All right, Tuesday at Granada, Max Sabbath, yeah. the Black Sabbath McDonald's-themed cover band. <laughs> That's funny. At Club Dada, Howling Giant, at the factory, or sorry, at the studio at the factory, Earl Sweatshirt, at the factory, Wolf Mother. Hell yeah. Little oh, Wolf Mother. Uh, at Tannehill's Tavern on Tuesday, Blues Traveler. At Granada. Blues Traveler! Yes! Wednesday at Granada, Cattle Decapitation. Ham, you have to go. This is pretty. It's beautiful. Uh, Wednesday at the House of Blues, The Struts. At Club Dada, Whitehall. At the Factory, Brittany Howard. Going going at the texas trust cu theater a texas heroes and friends tribute to randy travis at Tannehill's tavern on wednesday the head in the heart thursday at the aac doja cat everybody knows that we don't have to play I'm that i'm going to head in the heart at uh granada gaelic storm at club dada clay street unit Dada. at windspear kansas oh god how are they not all dead? I don't know. At the studio at the factory. Oh, welcome to town. Wayunaya? I don't know. And uh, at Deep Ellum Art Company, Yard Act. I might go to that. Uh, at Reconsider Lounge, a violent femmes cover band comprised of sapphic sunbathers, Scissor in the Sun. <laughs> and a tribute to Genesis, fronted by a ticket ticker man who doesn't understand the concept of not eating on the air. Lando Confusion. All right. Yes. I like it. All right, it's 650 on the ticket.